Yo, what's good, people? This is the Option Podcast. This is episode one fifty nine, maybe. Man, you know we move. We're moving fast, dude. <laughs> that guy over there looks yeah. like Sean Ledig. Let's get that intro in. The episode starts right now. <laughs> Come on, Ladig. Yes. Yo. Yo, yo. <laughs> yeah, you know what? It's Sean, so I got to do this. Okay, guys, you have asked, you have asked, you have asked, and now you shall receive because you know what's coming. I've got to give the people, dun, 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 give the people what they want. Dun, 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 yeah. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Sean. Yes, it's better with time. You know what I mean? <laughs> Agent like wine. Some people like right. vinegar. For me, I'm going to take my wine and I'm going to drink a glass of that wine with one Sean Ledig. Welcome to the show, baby. When I first saw you in a suit over the weekend, I was like, man, he's in a lot of trouble. He going to court? <laughs> I'm like, I felt like Mr. T, hey, you in a suit. You in a lot of trouble. <laughs> oh, right. I, try, I try not to yeah. make that the norm. I try, yeah. to, I try to stay comfortable, you know? Yeah. I guess, um, yeah, walk me through where you just came from this weekend and this and that. Yeah. We keep the moods uh, well, light light to cut, um, to tolerate the, som the somber. Um, yeah, the flow is yours, um, man. Well, what I did is I actually uh, just got back from a funeral of one of the boys that I had coached a little bit. And he was actually set for my son, one of his partners in a couple of tournaments. And he's just 16 years old. He passed away last Saturday in an accident. Um, Christian Tullis is his name. So yeah, definitely. Like I talked to you about that. I just want to dedicate this whole, this whole segment to him because, uh, great kid, even his great family. Um, he's 16. He was actually coming back from the Louisiana state volleyball championships in Lafayette. His dad is the lead head coach for Pope John Paul out there in Slidell, just a powerhouse of a team in Louisiana. He's with an uneducated guest, I guess we could probably Google some of this, but I'm almost positive he's probably one of the most highly decorated um, indoor volleyball coaches in the state of Louisiana. Whether mm -hmm. it's from high school club, he's got a club called Waddle Dob, mm -hmm. and they, they're a powerhouse. I mean, yeah. they kick out, they kick collegiate girls. They're they're a North Shore team. It's just like how Diggs had those two teams together. They kick out more college ready um, athletes than I think any other clubs in the in the state but um the christian was in an accident he passed away um on the scene so 16 it was rough i got the news early saturday morning on my way to jujitsu and uh i mean I, I called danny um i'm surprised yeah he, he even answered but he was actually in lafayette about to coach or get ready to coach this the state championship volleyball game so and his daughter plays with him and I, I mean, I don't think we had I, 30 seconds of me sobbing and telling how sorry I was because it's just it, it hits you hard, you know, when you've got a 18 year old son, a 15, a 15 year old daughter, you know, seven year old son. And I've, I've watched Christian grow up. Um, I watched his sisters grow up. I mean, they, the reason I'm even playing today is because of Danny. Um, <clears throat> I met Danny at a single A volleyball tournament at Bruce White's uh, complex that was in Mississippi. Um, he had opened one up. And uh, we were, I think we were playing A. It might have been in 2010, you know, right whenever I just started playing in leagues and everything out of Coconut Beach. And uh, I met Danny. His, him and his daughter were playing in A. She's maybe nine or ten years old at the time. Her name is Ainsley. She actually plays for Southeastern uh, Louisiana right now, which actually they are. They made it to the NCAA tournament. They won their, I think Southland. I think that's their conference. Okay. So she had a bit. She had a big weekend. You know, they they had to deal with all types of adversity. So number one, I got to give the whole family just. Danny coaches the next day in the state championship. They they, they got runner up. His his sister was playing on that team, Allie. She's a, she's a wonderful girl. Um, and then Ainsley, she's got the whole she's got the conference tournament and championship this week and this weekend. They ended up pulling that out, and uh, she's just you know so kudos to them. And then today, we had this uh, funeral, which. It was rough. It was rough walking in there <laughs> as a coach, as a family friend, mm. seeing all these kids, you know, some you've coached. But he was – he actually was a – he swam. He was a basketball player. This kid was – I mean, he's like me. I started laughing. I, like one of those I was, super I athletes, yeah. He was a super good athlete. We were talking. I mean, he was dunking in ninth grade, which me and him would talk about. I was like, you dunking yet, boy? He's like, oh, I, I got one in the game. So, you know, he would show me videos. He played – of course, 
he was he actually had gotten um some offers he was going to go play for penn state so that right there tells you he had everything going in his direction Mm -hmm. um and but his dad danny after i played him and his ainsley and him in a single a tournament he uh he, he just liked the way that I was, you know, composed myself. But we didn't go in there trying to bash the ball or anything. You know, we didn't know. I, was, I really didn't know what I was doing anyway. I was just playing off of just having fun, athleticism. But we were real gentle with, with him, you know. And Danny's a good player. He's a, he's a solid player. And uh, he comes to me and he said, look, man, he goes, I know I've heard about you. I know you want to play a little bit. He goes, I know nobody's going to pick you up and coach you. Nobody wants to get beat by you. He goes, but I'm going to take some time with you. And I was just like, really? He said, yeah. So <clears throat> he was like, look, I, I coach kids. If you want to come out here and, and uh, meet up with me, I'll show you how to pass, which, you know, I couldn't hit the side of a barn at that time with a pass. And so I would go to these practices, Jason. I'm walking in there, see all six foot five, 225 pounds of me. I'm looking around at all these little, like, 10, 11 year old girls. They're like, what are you doing in here? I'm like, well, same reason you're in here. You know, Coach yeah. Tellis wants you to come in and learn how to pass. And so then we start doing passing drills, like, oh my God. Okay. Now, you know, they're like, you're terrible. I was like, thanks. So, you know, I got to, I, I, so he would, he would give me a, he would give me a, um, he would say, look, we're going to be here Wednesday, here Monday, come in. And I I would go out there as much as possible. So I got to meet, you know, I got close to him. I got close to his family. Like I said, Ainsley was probably no older than 12 at this time. She's playing AAU ball and some other club teams. And so I watched her grow up with a, a, a number of girls and everything. And she's doing her thing now, but yeah, it's, uh, so I told people, I said, man, if it, if, if you know me from the volleyball world, you can say thanks to that man right there. Because without him, I probably wouldn't have put myself in a position to put myself out there. You know, because there wasn't anybody that was going to pick me up to just coach me. Because at that time, it was like, oh, no, he might beat us for the 200 bucks that we play for. Something like that, right. <clears throat> which ended up happening anyway. Yeah. But, I mean, I got, and I got and after Danny, there were others like Jim Shane and Jeff Skiro and even Bruce White. And, like, Evan will tell you, like, that's Evan was just a kid at the same time, too. He was a pup. So, Evan, Evan I got pictures of me and Evan in leagues where, yeah, he was a pup. He's, like, 13, 14 years old. But we're still doing – but we're still training together because he's 13. I'm 35, but I've never played. You know what I mean? So, Bruce White is just – and then Bruce White had me just drilling Evan with balls. Nice. He was like, hit the ball harder. Oh, my God. 12, 13-year-old kid. Is that the picture? Didn't... Was that the picture with Evan – and his father that has so the picture you sent me so so th- no that was the picture that i sent you uh was me and and christian that's me gotcha. christian his dad and his little brother yeah. um colin so colin's a really good player too he's, he's a little he's he's short he's only 12 maybe 13 he might be 12 he's going to be a really good player as well um but that was so there he is on, on the left he with the blue towel so that was one of my tournaments we had at digs and him and uh one of the other one of this play one of the other local players he actually, uh, Luke, they they won that tournament. I mean, it's phenomenal. There we go. Yeah. So Danny would always, you know, Danny would get me to play with the boys and stuff. And so this was the first. That was an adult Hot Shots tournament. We actually won it. So you can see, nice. I told Christian he couldn't hold any money up. I said, "Son, no. said, we're worried about you. We're worried about you don't get that. So but don't get that little boy like, a twenty dollar uh, bill. So <laughs> <laughs> when you give a little boy a twenty dollar bill, man, you're gonna turn his Colin, teeth Colin. yellow." <laughs> oh, look, Colin, 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 Colin was like, "Give me that money. Give me it." Because you know they finally they won some money. So that yeah. was over there. But that was and cool. there he is right there. That's so he's with Jason Harrell. He's the owner of uh, Point Break Volleyball. You know, right. one of the newer complexes out there on like Poncha Training. Like I said, Jason <clears throat> has been grooming him too. He just yeah. he's he's about six four, six five. He's sixteen. Super good athlete. But man, I gotta tell you, he actually has got one of the sweetest natural swings. And I mean, we were all gonna we all worked with him. We all I mean, anytime Danny was like, Hey, will you come work with the boys? Well, what am I gonna do? Tell him no. I was like, Well, of course I'm gonna come mm-hmm. come see him. I mean, he's the guy, you're the guy that got me started. But um, man, and just what is crazy about it is like I said, he played multiple sports, but he was a good kid, you know. He talked a little trash in the court, and we liked it. And, I mean, it was always fun with him, and we beat up on him enough. Actually, the last tournament they had at Diggs, this is a funny story, we actually were down by, like, eight or nine points. How He was playing with him and some of his buddies. And uh, I actually was like, man, I'm not letting these kids beat me. I ended up coming back, like, serving eight in a row. We got tied up, went up, ended up beating us, like, 27-25. And I, you know what? I'm, I'm looking across the net, and they're celebrating like they had just won the gold medal. And I was like, this is awesome. This it's is this is pretty match, much yeah. what it's about. Yeah. I said he's going to remember this his entire life, so, as the other kids. I mean, the girls too. It was a co-ed match, mm-hmm. and um, and it was a we had a good team. And but they, I'll tell you what, they played tough. They stayed aggressive. They didn't give in. They didn't, you know, they didn't falter. They just kept pushing to us. And 
they played smart. So after that, I was like, man, he's he's gonna he's just like Evan. <clears throat> like yeah. that picture I sent you of me and Evan a while back. That was he might have been sixteen at the same age. So he might have been that same age, but that was the first um league that he and I, you know, because he was playing with Susie Ruiz, she was one of the setters for Loyola and and Cameron Kime. He's probably the best player that you've never heard of in Louisiana. He's ridiculous. Right. But he's just real he's quiet. He actually worked as a, a drafter for me for years. He uh at the engineering firm. He he, he uh we beat you know all of the teams at white sands like Derek and all the good te- you know good teams quality teams and like and it was just baffling that i'm doing it with these two 16 year olds i mean Susie's uh, she's a you know great setter too but that's when you just look at these kids you know like all right they're just gonna keep getting better from here and now look look at him yeah. evan's one of the top players on the avp you yeah. got just like Kristen Nuss and them they're the same thing you, you watch these these kids grow I up mean, since they were young and yeah well, now they're both like dominating. Well, I wanted to to jump in, in into the middle of this as a caveat, and I promise to bring it back that I have an, the utmost respect and appreciation for any any coach who has the patience to teach adults. Right now, if you live where I live on the West Coast, right, I'm, I live in Hermosa yeah. Beach, right, and the it's very very easy to find camps, clinics, and clubs yeah. for juniors. Different, you know, levels to this and yeah. this and that, and reputations for kids and whatever. And this yeah. is a good old boys club, um, which I'm not going to get into because every, everywhere you go is going to have uh, cliques, and and yeah. and at some oh, point yeah. you're going to be a proud to be one of the part of that clique, right? Yeah. Um, so the crux of the coaching out here and the development is only limited to this dichotomy: professionals, yeah. right, yeah. who are out here yeah. training, trying to you know trying to do something better other than wait tables at night or bounce. Um, and juniors, yeah. juniors, yeah. Uh, um, pros, and no one in between, right? So, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I'm I'm bringing it back. I, I promise. Um, mm-hmm. There's something really cool about someone like, for example, Martin Buret, who's like, yeah. I'm doing this camp, this getaway thing, and it's just for adults, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And yeah. the reason why I'm bringing it up is because it takes a lot of audacity and patience to coach people that you already know is hesitant um, on giving up control on some things yeah. right we're adults yeah. we're already comfortable in our skin you more more than you more than uh, particularly more than others you're very comfortable in your skin i, I love talking yeah. to you um and this guy is interested in coaching an adult yeah. that wants to learn and there's a general respect thing and a caveat that i wanted to bring back uh, away from the conversation and back because yeah. it shows what a mensch uh, um um this person's just not this there, there there's so many there's so many more things so that's just a, yeah. a small that's not even a big chapter i'm, I'm, I'm not yeah. i'm not even trying to make that as a straw person fallacy right this is this is a yeah. small part yeah. of all of the many things that they came into play that shaped this person um that oh, yeah. people come to love and respect and now mourn you know yeah so, yeah you know. i mean you're right i mean it's like you said mark i mean look at mark so mark is one of the reasons I even met you. I mean, because I, in 2016, remember, I went out there. I was like, man, because I mean, I, I the guys, the, when I moved to Ohio or I had the business go to Ohio and I was up there, look, Cincinnati, Cleveland, Columbus, I think, I think second to none, if not, I mean, Ohio, and we've talked about this before, that area, Illinois, Ohio, that, that area, Pennsylvania, they've got some of the, the indoor they're savages they're, they're tops they're yeah. tops they're savages i mean you're right i mean look i mean getting to practice with the guys down in columbus just day in and day out and that mm-hmm. i had no problem driving to cincinnati to go meet up with john and those guys as well for practices but in, in joe ruzik and all those other guys because they were that good but i mean they that's they're, they're that good i mean and, and just being around there but whenever i said you know what somebody's like hey man just go check out some stuff in in california and i, and I went to see mark so Mark was very helpful. And then of course, and I met you just in have just a, just in a happenstance. And so that was another, you know, having you as, as, as coach, as coaching me was, was, was strong as well. I mean, then, and then Priscilla, once right. I worked with Mark long enough, you know, Mark, he'll let you know where he, where, you know, if you're, if you're in a group setting or, or how he's coaching you, he'll, he'll let you know if there's somebody else that might be able to, you can benefit from. And he right. told me right away, he said, look, he said, you're at a good point right here. He said, go, go see Priscilla. So I got to work with Priscilla. And of course she's got a phenomenal yeah. adults uh, thing going on in Florida, South Florida. Yeah. I mean, that's guys, I mean, that's a uh, pre, pre, um, pre Prianta Dosa Lima, right? Priscilla, they call her pre. Right. Sorry, go ahead. Call her pre. Yeah, that's right. So she's Brazilian. And I mean, she, she's actually a Louisiana native. We like to say that, but she's actually, she came to ULL and played at ULL mm-hmm. before she got hot, heavy and hot on the uh, AVP. And, um, you know, she still comes around and everything, but 
I've sent many, many of kids and adults her way. Like they, people have asked me, I've had adults ask me like, what, what do you think I should do? And I've, I've sent people to Mark since then. I was mm-hmm. like, look, if you're really, I said, you can get good coaching here. Like we've talked about it, you know, in previous podcasts and conversations, Joey Keener was mm-hmm. the first person to step up and say, Hey, I can help adults because he'd been playing the game, you know, with him and Derek and these other players for 20 plus years at that point in time. So they knew the game. They may not have known it. <clears throat> Joey's got a, a strong IQ. They both do, but Joey's got a good, strong IQ, but Joey can actually present himself in a, uh, in a very easy learning manner. But, um, but yeah, stepping in, it, you're right. It does take a lot for a, a grown for to, to coach grown adults, you know, and so, but like I always, I always give praise to Mark. I've always sent people out his way. I mean, people from here have gone to see Mark. They're mm-hmm. like, what do you suggest? You know, like my suggestion is learn what you can from the people here. Go try him out. Or, yeah. you know, if you don't want to go that far, go see Priscilla down mm-hmm. in South Florida. She I am. Um, I'm going to share a little secret about Mark um, that he doesn't care if I share. Mark yeah. is socially homeless. He's yeah. like. He's not part of any particular click out here. He came out no. here socially homeless and he became a one man click and yeah. he had you know a big pair of balls between his legs and said anybody want to <laughs> hop on? Let's let's yeah. take this ride together. Let's all grow together as human beings, not just volleyball players. And yeah. you know, I, I mean, I talk to him rarely because the guy is so he's the James Brown of volleyball. He's so on the move. Hey, he he sees me. He's like Jason equals a long conversation. I'm gonna just say hi and get <laughs> and get and get the hell out of here. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know. So, so, so true. yeah, but 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 I know that he knows that. Uh, we both know know each other long enough to know. I know you got somewhere to go. So now, if I stop him to talk about something, he knows it's gonna be for a reason. Not just oh, not, yeah. not just not just Jason Small talk, and not like when you're coming uh-huh. back on the podcast or something crazy like that. Because he's always welcome and he's always willing. So I'm gonna give him that. Yeah. And yes. it's very it's it's his socially homeless uh, stature is so well hidden because he's still a competitive volleyball player, right? And yeah. if he were to win an AVP championship, you know the AVP is going to be the first one to jump in front of that parade to say he's one of us, right? So, yeah, um, yeah enough. I'm, I'm not... Actually, I'm not even going to defend myself today. I'm going to just say what it is. I was just trying to say I'm not trying to disrespect the AVP, but I'm just trying yeah. to be real. They'll be the first ones to yeah. jump in front of that parade and say, yeah, we were with them the whole time, right? You know, but, oh, of course. You yeah. know, and yeah. I don't want to sound like a hater, but like Jay-Z said um, in his song, Eight Miles, and you're going to like this. Um, he says, you what? Where were you before I blew this up? I ain't see you in the court yeah. when everybody was suing us. I ain't see you wearing black when everybody was suiting up. Back in the day, yeah. getting it in, there was no me, you, and us. <laughs> <laughs> that's right yeah, well, so that's, that's the brooklyn way but um yeah i i really wanted to appreciate that but i wanted to jump into something oh somebody think they're gonna call me right now they they got some balls um <laughs> but um i wanted to talk about what makes a good coach for coaching adults i want to i want to jump yeah. on the other on the other side of that spectrum because you yeah. were a yeah. late bloomer that became this really really good volleyball player you know me i started at 18 and you know three years later i was playing overseas you know for for, 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 real, for real money people, you, you know if you if you hear people talk now mm-hmm. they'll think that 18 20 is 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 a late bloomer then yeah. i mean the yeah. way that the, the game is gone but i yep. mean yeah to coach it to coach you see adults, 13s in there like she's too old <laughs> Oh, no, I mean, she's it's too crazy. old. When, I, you hear, when, you, like, when you hear some of these coaches talk about, like, <laughs> like, like I mean, they'll, they'll ask you. I've had, I've had coaches ask you, like, I'm telling them about one of these local girls, mm-hmm. and you know, and they're like, "Who's her parents? And what is she? Is she a gorilla at the net? Is she? Is she? You know, can she take it? Did she can take a hit?" I'm like, "Yeah, I mean, but." And they're like, "How old is she?" And I'm like, 13 I'm like, "Whoa!" And I'm like, "Guys, that's, that's you're like, still, we're not training Jedi. Remember, like Star Wars, I when there was like Anakin was too old." <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Anakin is too old. He's like a little kid. But um, I think what I wanted to talk about from the other person's perspective, let's say you have an adult that le- that knows how to play, right? And mm-hmm. they never really hit the top and there were some things that kind of got in their way and they want to hire a coach to coach them. So one of the biggest challenges, I think, and um, I'm, I'll leave names out of this. There was a particular player that was being coached by someone who was an AVP champ, right? And she didn't get a lot out of it because – he spent more time challenging things that she needs to, he felt she needs to get rid of and rebuild rather than say, hey, you know, this ain't hurting her game. Um, let's move on. Let's move on with this. I'll give you an example. Yeah. If you are a knee down passer, like a ball's coming mm-hmm. short, and if you, your coach to, to, to hit your knee first and then platform and yeah. angle your platform, 
Um, and if you run into a player, maybe a former indoor player that doesn't use his knees to do that, he just he just goes down. Your rationale, or, or your um, and your experience as a professional, will say that takes suck that takes way too much energy that stabs your gas tank, right? So that's where yeah. he's coming from. And everybody yeah. with similar experience will agree with him. But on the yeah. other hand, if that's all that person has been knowing to do he's not stabbing his gas tank because it's in his muscle memory it's he's not it's not stabbing his gas tank because he does it better than you and he can do it longer than you because that's all he knows and this person said let's not waste too much time on this thing that's going to take me a year (laughs) you know right and and let's 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 help me with something that that can really help my game this isn't helping my Mm -hmm. game because if your rational is the gas tank no yeah you know and 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 i felt bad for her and i felt bad the pro the pro that coached her doesn't know that he's Mm -hmm. just thinking oh she don't want to learn you know and and it's weird it's weird because it's commensurate with their level of experience. Like Phil, right? Mm-hmm. If Phil gets a new coach, the new coach ain't gonna be like you're, you have a goofy foot approach, right? Goofy foot I was for just people. About li- to say that, yeah, for yeah. people. Li- uh, for people listening at home, goofy foot approaches. You have a left-handed approach. You go left, right, right, <laughs> right. left, right, um, yeah. and you hit with your right hand, right? And is Phil gonna change his steps? No. No. And, and is it because he's a pro? Uh, because he forgot more than that coach ever knows no that's not the reason either he's not changing his steps because it's what his muscle memory knows um it's not limiting his range because he found a way to do that to go straight up instead of instead of pivot foot which will limit his Mm -hmm. range right if if you try to pivot for the goofy foot approach it limits your range but he's just taking both feet are going straight up um and he gets that range back so that's just an example you're going to say phil too right yeah. Well, yeah, I was gonna say Phil. Um, I'm goofy foot. Like I, I know yeah. a couple of guys that are like, goofy foot. How about Lion like, King? How about Lion King for Samoylo yeah. so from Latvia? How about yeah. Tina Gradina, who who was Dane's yes. best player on the pair one? <laughs> Dane, yeah. I love you, yeah. and you're one of the best coaches out there. But you ain't jumping in front of that parade. She was a baller. No, she was no. a baller before she even met you. <laughs> and I, and I've, I've, had, I've had coaches tell me the same thing. They're like, well, you know, you'll get more power. And I'm thinking, like, you know, when I'm bouncing the balls over the safety mm-hmm. nets, I'm like, I don't know if that's something I really need. I said, I probably need more control of power. So just let me do. Yeah. Let me look out. Let me, you know. But this is the funny thing is, I I, I do everything goofy footed. Like, you know, I'm, I'm yeah. I use my left hand a lot, but. Like even when I skateboard, people are like, "What the hell are you doing?" Huh. I, I skateboard goofy foot. I do all mm. this other stuff. But I mean, and then I, I remember one, the first person ever told me I was goofy foot was Derek, because you know he yeah. is too. And he was like, and we started laughing. And I said, "Well, what, what do you do? Do you change that?" He's like, "Look, man, he's like you're 35 years old." He goes, "I had somebody try to tell me to do the same thing," and he said the same. He had the same ideology about it. He was like, I, "I win everything around here. I don't think I need to change my footing in my mid 20s." And I got it. I was like, "No, you're you're probably right. You probably right. made a good call on that one." But I mean, now look, different things with bass, like forms and stuff like that. When you at a younger age, maybe it's possible. But I've seen people change it, mm-hmm. um, and I've seen people, you know, at a younger age be able to do stuff. But once something's in bread, that's I think with with the adult coaching, it's it's a fine line of patience, persistence, and you just and but you because you want to get the most uh, quality, but and you want to be efficient. Efficient right. and effectiveness is your two things that you that you want to do. Because a lot of adults that listen, they like I did. I'll pay. Like I pay. You got to pay. You got. If you're gonna get a coach, you're gonna have to pay for it. That's just the way it goes. If you're so an you adult, you should know coach. better too. I mean, come on. Yeah, and you should. And yeah, and like I've heard people talk about this. Like, man, they should be glad that I'm here. Like, no, 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 no. They should not be glad that you're here. You're a dime a dozen. They're actually showing you stuff that you didn't know. And so, but the, I got to look. Joey never charged me. Like I took Joey out to eat like every week though. You know what I mean? We go to we go yeah after practice. Wait, you took him out to eat? Yeah, he was like. Then he did charge you. you For people listening, do you know how this man throws down for dinner? (laughs) Dude, I would rather just take the money (laughs) than feel like I owe you after you treated me to like I don't know carmines or some crazy, crazy stuff. But 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 I I looked at it in that sense. But you know, but we're really and and from the adult perspective. So what what changed me? Mm Is and it, it came about with like uh, Logan Pence and a couple other guys from Ohio. You know, they're coaches, right. and uh, like Joe Ruse, just Joe and some other guys that play up there. They, I actually had to just be humble and say, "Look, guys, I probably need to be coached like a kid because I know that I've done right. a few things, not the best things. I know that I've got some bad habits. So let's just start from square one. 
And and they were looking at me like, well, you you got the time, you know. They they were like, look, as long as I showed up, because my business was in Steubenville, so I still had to drive two hours to go to to Columbus, and another two and a half wow. hours, not two hours, of Cincinnati, good lord, d- depending. Mm-hmm. But that's why you know. But I'd go up to Toledo for one of the oil uh, facilities up there with the company. So, <clears throat> I mean, I drove around a lot, but I was but I was like, hey, I can be here three times a week. I'll be here three times a week. Let's put the work in. They always had a good group, me, Joe Jackson. I mean, it, it changed a lot, but you always had 10 to 12 solid people, you know. So that that, that made it easy for me. So that was – I kind of got to incognito get away from what I was always around mm-hmm. and got into a new group, groups, and mm-hmm. they were able to work with me with, you know, with like some younger players on the beach mm-hmm. primarily. And so it was, well, it hit, was a start, but yeah. One of the, the things that they didn't have to um, – that they could skip with you was your hand-eye. Like there are some people that maybe they're not just athletic and there's some coaches that are like, Hey, let's just, we're going to throw a tennis ball against the wall, react this and that, and, you know, and, and increase that kind of whatever. And as a level of the game gets, that gets faster, you start hitting, uh, you know, balls at them with a faster speed. So their matrix can adjust hand die wise yeah, and this and that. Yeah. But you, you, um, I guess as a former basketball player, division one basketball player had really, really good hand eye. And there were, I remember there were like pickup games where I'm like, you, you got stuck at the net and I tried to like bump a ball over free ball. And you just, you just waited, you just timed it and, and then just like caveman and threw it down. I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> The hell's he even doing at the net, yeah. man? I, I was trying. I was trying to beat this guy's. I was trying to beat this guy's peel. So, uh, um, you know. so uh, yeah. So uh, I, I think the challenge for a lot of these coaches is to, like you said, uh, um, uh, cater to the customer because when you cater to the customer who's uh, other client, yeah. Um, yeah. you get to know who they are from the neck up. And then eventually mm-hmm. see how the way they move and be like, all right, this is how yeah. this is how I can make this person a better player. This is how I can make this person a better version of himself. Uh, yeah. So yeah. one of the big one of the things that makes me a good juniors coach is like on the beach. I have some new ideas for some drills. And my, Kelly, my wife, she plays. Um, mm-hmm. She's she's been my experimental guinea pig, and she's not. If you know anything about Kelly, she ain't. She's not the first one to be quick to give up control, right? She she's no, like, why should no. I do this? What if I want to do that? You know, so so sometimes I'm just like, I don't even want to be out here. And then sometimes I'm, uh, you know, and but it always ends where like we glad we came because one, yeah. I like I like new ideas, and two, she she likes to keep moving, right? If she mm-hmm. stops moving, yeah. she'll die. Um, for anyone yeah. that knows my my absolutely gorgeous, thin, Harvard educated, drop dead sexy. I was gonna wife. say. So yeah, um, <laughs> you married you married up. Um, I did marry smart, up. Smart men marry Yo, up. Let me tell you something. Right let me tell you something. If you're not a genius by the time you're forty, make sure you married the one, man. Come on, That's man. Right, you gotta huh? have someone have a relationship. <laughs> it's good to have two people who intellectually tickle each other, but damn, man, as a common denominator, yeah. make sure she's smart enough for the both of you. You know, you right. catch up a little bit, and then you can have some of those fun conversations. But that, that's 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 how yeah. Kelly rocks. But yeah, so it's really made me a better um, juniors coach. Understanding adults yeah. made me understand developing um, um, personalities and characters by understanding um, different personalities who already have their their edge together, right? Yeah. Already have yeah. their stuff together. Uh, one one of the many small things. So is that what you did this weekend? You uh, you had a little funeral. You play a little volleyball. Um, I, no, I didn't play any volleyball. Actually, mm-hmm. I, uh, I'm still, you know, once since once I started mm-hmm. on the the BJJ thing, I kind of mm-hmm. been. I mean, I've coached, I've coached a little bit. I've mm-hmm. gotten to play a little bit here and there, but really just kind of step back a little bit because you know, I'm, I mean, I'm I look one trick pony. Uh-huh. Like, look, if I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna yeah. do it all the way. You know yeah. me, I'm a hundred and ten percenter. So once I got into the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu thing. Um, which we're definitely going to talk about in a, in a few minutes. Oh yeah, yeah. so 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 that that's about yeah. This Let's weekend um, was really a okay. A relax. I mean. It was yeah the funeral was today but mm-hmm. uh this week and I, I just trained good bit, um because yeah. i'm actually able to you know i had surgery on my uh tricep i got my tricep completely torn away from my elbow mm-hmm. what five was that trade was that I rolling got, or was that in competition yeah it was it was in competition actually yeah. i went to a competition <clears throat> a local one um an agf and the guys that were in my division they didn't show up well they were this is what's weird i coached two kids that day i saw the guys that were there because you know they you can see them on the web you can see on the site that you'll be able to see they are come six seven o'clock i went to go get into the pit and they're like nobody's here so like well you got two choices you can get your money back i was like man i kind of want to roll because i've got some competitions coming up pretty soon and uh, they're like well look you can go to the 20 year the 20 like 29 or 30 year division and I'm like, that's fine with me, though. But you got to go up and wait. <laughs> I'm like, great. So you know, I competed in the 222 and under, 225 and under. 
and they put me in this group of like three guys that are all 260, 270, 280 or better. This kid's like 29 years old. But um, we got in there, man. I grabbed hold of him, got my grips, went to move him. It's like a tree stump. It didn't go very far. Well, he pulls me down, and I put my arm down the post, and it hyperextended so hard, it, it, it popped my tendon. And um, I was like, oh, my gosh, I got up. I, in the video, you can see it. I grabbed my arm, and I'm kind of messing with it. I'm backing up off of him. <clears throat> but then I said, well, show's got to go on, and I ended up winning the match. Um, I got into my guard. They stood us up. We did some things, and I got a take. I, I just an aggressive, violent takedown, which was great. Got my two points, mounted him. Never, I got took side control, never let off of him. So I ended up winning, but man, I took a beating. And then one of my one of my teammates was actually on the other side of the bracket. He made it to the finals, to the gold medal match. And I had told him before, I said, like, "Look, if you win, I'll succeed to you. You're you're a teammate. I don't I don't really like to compete against teammates." I said, "But if you don't," I said, "I guess I'll go against that big blockhead over there sitting across the mat." So to make sure you win. <laughs> yeah. He won. He won by submission. I just told the ref, I was like, "Hey, look, I'm not nope. sure how bad it is." <clears throat> and I got it checked up for the PT. And they didn't know how he's like, I think it's messed up, but you want to check. And I competed twice after that. Mm -hmm. IBJJF. So I but won I mean, two golds. At, yeah. You know, but I mean, energy, like, not injury, notwithstanding. I, there is, is there an, an un, unwritten rule that like people from the same club don't, well, uh, are reluctant yeah. to compete against each other? Because I know, are, I know in the um, UFC, like um, Daniel Cormier, it's American mm -hmm. Kickboxing Academy or whatever. Yeah. And um, Cain Velasquez. You know, it was his teammate, and they're like, they're telling Dan, you should go up heavyweight and get that belt. And he's like, there's, there's, look, there's only one path if I go heavyweight. That's towards the title. And right now, the champion right. is Kane, and I'm not. Yeah. No, I'm not going to fight my teammate. Yeah. So they actually, they actually. So this is, it's, it's kind of prevalent um, around in different clubs and you know different um, groups and everything. Like I, 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 I compete for Gracie United, Team Jucal, Team Jucal South. Like okay. my professor is uh, Rafael Elwanger. He's Brazilian. He's from Rafael Brazil. is there? Rafael. And like he uh and I mean look, he started, I mean, if his story is amazing. He's from Brazil. He started his mom put him in at like four or five years old. She made him. He's Brazilian moms, man. You think these these southern home cook moms are crazy trying to get your boys to play sports. She was like, get in there. Mm -hmm. And uh he was in it. He actually he he actually trained under one of the Gracies. I'm trying to think, um, uh, Carlos Gracie Jr. Because right. our his his professor is uh Alison uh, Jucal writes, and so Professor Jucal, he's he actually grew up with the Gracies. He was on the whole place where they all trained together. Yeah, big like, old was, nuclear he, family. Yeah. Yes, yes. He said he never was able to train in there. There was a house on the property that only the Gracies could train at. So you got, you know, you got, you know me. I'm just like volleyball. I got to learn this history of it. Um, he, but he's God. He's so amazing. These guys have been black belts for twenty plus years. You know, rolling with them is like trying to fight against a magician i mean it's just crazy the things professor's 260 shouldn't move the way he is like a bumblebee shouldn't be moving that way <laughs> and he's like handstand passing and you know he's wrist locking you every 10 seconds but um <clears throat> but that's you know he got into it when he was younger and i'm glad he did but he came to u.s oh man it might have been trying to think early 2000s and uh he started uh gracie united and so it's it's taken off you know so um, i'm glad it, i'm glad i started doing it to be honest with you because volleyball was kind of i was on the on the outs of that i knew that i probably needed something to pick up but that's but since i've started like you know come full circle that's i've been just really concentrating i mean i've gone through a year of competition 14 medals 11 golds uh ch european championship um i got a, i got an international Masters gold, international masters silver. <clears throat> These are all the four majors. Mm -hmm. I was, I was. Was, on, was Rome one of them? Yeah, well, I went to yeah. Rome and won the European mm -hmm. Championships. I'm slated for, uh, for for France. I'm going to Paris, France, the 21st to the 30th to try to try to you know defend that title, go back for the European Championships. So you know, it's it's taken me it's taken me some pretty fun places. The family gets to come; they enjoy it. I mean, my youngest he competes. You know, he competes at some of the local tournaments and the in houses, and it's it's given him a lot of confidence and a lot of uh, self esteem, which I see which I see happen to a bunch of the kids that actually get into it. So I actually coach a little bit now, which why not? It gives me a little more time to spend with him. That's so cool. And um, yeah. So it's 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 been an interesting uh, transition over. I, I can't even imagine. Tell me tell me about Rome. Talk to me about Rome. 
um, talk to me about like the, the atmosphere, the environment. Um, I know a guy like you who loves food can appreciate, uh, who's kind of a foodie would appreciate, yeah. um, well, would appreciate Rome, would appreciate I, I, Florence, would appreciate Tuscany, yeah. like all of these places got pretty yeah. decent food. It was yeah amazing. It was amazing, but I'd never been, I'd never been out of the country that way. I'd been down to you know Mexico and Costa Rica and places south of the border, but I'd never been to Europe before. So this was something brand new to me. And I was like, man, I want to go. I think, you know, I want to go and compete. <clears throat> had all these COVID restrictions too. So I had to get like, I had to fill stuff out to be able to go there without, you know, without being vaccinated and stuff like that. And I had to get, get, get things done. So we got all past all of that stuff. And then, um, yeah, we're there, <laughs> you know, and I'm sitting here and I've got to maintain weight because I had, I, you know, I walk around at 225. <clears throat> but for me to compete, I've got to compete with my gi on 35 minutes before my match at 222 right. okay. or 100, kilo, 100 kilos. And so, uh, yeah, I've been, I have been—I kind of don't have to diet crazy, but I still have to just watch with no pastas, pastas, breads, right. uh, rices. So we get there and we've got all everything set up. We've gone to the Coliseum and we got a couple of days. Well, all of a sudden they push my, my fight date back. I'm like... Man, all I've been watching is is everybody eat all this good food. I've been, you know, pecking away and eating a couple of things here and there, bruschettas and all that stuff, but no breads, no pastas. And uh, so then my day comes up. <clears throat> so we got our our driver picks us up. We go to the the coast and um, it's in this coliseum, and I see all these big names in there because I mean it's it's the European Championships. It's like <laughs> no matter what belt you are, no matter what age you are, you're there to compete. And uh, we get there, you know, nerves are kind of kicking a little bit. I'm a big scene. I'm trying to loosen myself up. I'm trying to pick out who it is that's in my division. I kind of catch a few of them. So <clears throat> got my first match underway. In the semis, I fight the Italian guy. So <laughs> I'm like, great. Very good match. Super good competitor. Good thing it was on the ground because apparently afterwards I find out both him and the guy that I competed in in the, in the uh, finals – they were professional kickboxers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was so, like, I mean, they're both strong. They're both yeah. athletic. And the footwork and, um, is superior. Yeah, yeah and the footwork. So Luca, so I actually had a takedown on Luca, got to his back. So I was able to just just maintain him for there. He actually had gotten my knee, my leg in a lock. and But I kept, you know, moving it back and forth because he had, I mean, strong legs, of course. Man, my leg, it felt like he was, it felt like he was pretty hurt. You shredded that, but, but I, <laughs> I did. I, did. So I, had to, like, I was walking it off. And so the next guy, he's uh that I competed against, great competitor. I, we all keep in touch together too. That's the good thing about it, you know. You, you build these camaraderies with these guys. You try to, you know, strangle for five minutes. But in the finals, I was just pumped. Um, I got a good takedown, finished on submission, and just the crowd goes crazy. I guess I got adopted as you know the Italian favorite after that that yeah. that win in the semis. And I just was like, just pumped. My gi is open, you know. I'm flexing, just running around the mat. <laughs> so mm. that, that's just a, that's just a great time. Experiment. Ex ex yeah, ex yeah, experience that you 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 can't, you know, you can't replicate that. Right. So the family's there. We had a good time. But I tell you what, the minute I put that gold medal on my neck, I gave everybody a hug. We got back in the vehicle, went straight back to Rome. Yeah, and I went to to one of the closest restaurants that was open at ten thirty at night, and I just the table was filled with food. I had, yeah. I had shrimp, I had squid, I had every, I had, you name it, it was on the table. They bring more bread, bring this, yeah. bring that. So after that, we you know we just ate for days, you know, and then of course we did. We spent to go spend some time in Florence too, because I was like, you know what, let's just go check everything yeah. else out. So, I've been to Florence. I went to. I was there for eleven days. Actually, I went to uh, uh, Tuscany, Florence, um, yeah. uh, somewhere in between. I can't remember. And we finished at Rome. We we left. Um, we left Italy via Rome or whatever. But yeah. there's besides New York City. And this is just my own only personal experience. Italy is one of the only places you can eat a ton of bread and not get fat. <laughs> yeah. I'm like everybody's bringing home bread by the loaf. So these long, these <laughs> these long old things. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh, oh, hey, slinging on their shoulder, or carrying yeah. it like carrying it like an AT4 anti tank rocket launcher. Right? That's <laughs> it's a big old piece of bread, and it's weird because I in New York I eat pizza four days a week and never get fat. Yeah. You know, it's just because yeah. it was just the kind of bread, and it was it was. It is. That's, soft that's water hard water is. and this and that in california mm -hmm. i mean california besides pizza not being my favorite food anymore out here i've given up mm -hmm. um yeah it was something where i eat pizza i just felt really bad <laughs> you know yeah. but in new york yeah. man, i'm like uh, it was that was my night food i mean all day yeah, long so um yeah. 
so but the, that's why i was asking about the food because it was I, it was a terrific 14 days and they love volleyball out there oh, oh yeah yeah they I, do they, they i mean any any chance i had a chance if somebody had, had mentioned to me about something you know like i found a gym that i'd went to because it had a steam room and everything like that and of course everything is like co-ed over there i'm sitting mm-hmm. in the steam room just kicking it in this thing and all of a sudden this lady comes in like you know, paying his bras like, oh, hello. <laughs> I was yeah. like, you know, for them, it doesn't matter. But I'm just sitting here. I'm, I'm kind of kicking it in my box. And breathe. I mean, because I didn't know it was like a co-ed thing. I thought yeah. it was like men's only. Yeah. But she came in. She could have cared less. She put a towel down. I was like, hey. You there know. it is. Forget so, it. But, um, uh. but the food there, the food there is so fresh. Uh-huh. And it's also, there's not a lot of the GMO. There's just not a lot of stuff in it. Right. So you could tell the difference. And then right after I left, of course, I flew into France. I flew I flew back in from Rome, and I had I competed that weekend in the New Orleans International. Mm-hmm. So I competed. Thank goodness it, it was I competed Sunday because uh, we got held over in Atlanta uh, Saturday night. Right. So I flew right into Bat Louisiana that mm-hmm. morning, and uh, yeah, I walked. I went from I went from the uh, airport straight into the New Orleans Open, right. and won gold there. <laughs> nice <laughs> so, that's, that's my, so cool me and my teammates me and my teammates had a blast and i told him i was like man winning in rome was awesome right but it was just me my you know mm-hmm. me angelique and, and soren and um and of course my teammates were just blowing me up the whole time they were like think about this do this clay clay gordon Hire, he's a good friend of mine and he actually i grew up with clay this is a, this is how small the world is me and clay's like, younger brother uh chris were good friends i mean bicycle ride buddies from baker louisiana you know ghetto town usa and um and, and I, when I first saw Clay at the Worlds that year, I was like, man, this guy looks so familiar. We'll come to find out. It's, he's Clay Gordon, I, you know. He uh, is Chris's older brother. So, But Chris, Clay has been instrumental, and in, he's one of my teammates, just like Professor. They they text me and message me and my comp- competitors. They, they'll, they'll message me what these guys' tendencies are. You know, and you can look me up, <clears throat> and you can find all my matches. So, you know, people do that with me. I do it with me. I did it in volleyball, too. You Big, know, you bigger crowd than volleyball. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> right now, right now, you're right. Rome, you know? Rome was, uh, look, Rome was packing. It Tell was, me it, it was. was. It was, I'm telling man, it was amazing. And Rome I mean, was just, packed. Just, yeah. It was. It, mm-hmm. was. it was packed. And every day was like that. It, that was the cool thing. Even with the restrictions they had going on, just with the competitors and the people. I mean, people were there because it was actually, I think, COVID was actually, the COVID restrictions were kind of dying down. So everybody was itching to get out. That's another thing yeah. that made it so amazing. And, you know, and so, yeah, the rest of the trip was just awesome. We went and spent some time in Florence, three or four days, <clears throat> went back to Rome, spent our few final days there, and then we flew back. And, right. you know, me, I've got my, my my thing where I'll wear my medal for the first 24 hours. So, you know, no shame right. in that. And uh, we actually, I had it with me on my bag when we were flying out in Delta. The, guy, the guys and girls at Delta, they, they saw it. They upgraded us to first mm. class. I mean, yeah. we, we were in business select, which is nice, you know, but yeah. it makes us up. And they were like, hey, well, you know, congratulations. We've got some extra seats. So I've got me, Angelique. And you're and like, wait, I get to fly overseas first class? Yes. That's, <laughs> get that's out what, of that's here. What made, that's, what made, that's what made, I think, having to compete in New Orleans a breeze. Because I yeah. got to, you know, have nine, ten hours of uh, just laying back, relaxing, eating. I was kind of worried about the food because I was like, oh, yeah, I, can't, I can't get too many. Uh, too many yeah. Because, hey, for people listening at home, um, 100 kilos is 2.2 pounds. Sean walks around to 225. So yeah. the, so the 225. five pounds mixed with the ghee and all that stuff is always one of those things yeah. where you try, you always got to yeah. keep an eye on, right? So 220, um, 222 yeah. is, is what we got to get by. So what I normally do is I'll get down to 216. Right. That gives me a little cushion. Mm-hmm. But I'll tell you what, these last few times, me and some of my professors and teammates, I've had to go out like in Houston. So yeah. I competed. My first competition back was the Houston Open. I won gold in my division. Thank God. I, Tried to give it away, but I won, and then I won silver in the open where there's no weight weight class, and uh, I had to lose a, like a pound and a half, maybe thirty minutes before. I don't know if it's what I was eating or what was going on, but when I got on the scale with my gear, I was like, "Oh, you got to be kidding me!" So yeah. I took that off and I actually went and put a sweatshirt on and went outside in the hot. That's how you humid. do. That's, how, yep. that's it. That, and that's, that's it. it. That's, I, and let me tell you something. For heavyweights, that's a cinch because one pound you could do that just sweating and then go oh, and then my, go my and then go use but, go yeah, pee they, go they use the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, my yeah. teammates laugh at me like, "How do you do that?" I'm like, "You know what? I'm, yeah. I'm just built like this." I said yeah. I was a skinny kid, so but when I sweat, I sweat. You know. Yeah. Did you it, did you wrestle in high school up. too? Did you know you're wrestling in no, high school? Because those guys no, have made weight cutting an art for them. Because uh, oh, wrest- wrestling are like same yeah. day weigh-ins, and I think jujitsu is too, right? Same day mm-hmm. weigh-ins. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So that's and that's the thing. Like people don't understand. Like, oh, you can. Some of the guys when they do some of the well, it depends on the 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 uh, 
like the it, IBJJF, it's the same day weigh-ins. Like right. Naga and a couple of other ones, you can get 7 o'clock a.m. You know, if, if I weigh in at 7 a.m., I'm always going to be 217, 218. But, you know, by the end of the – by seven, you know, t- noon or 1 o'clock after a first meal, I'm already up to 223. You know what I mean? So that variance that I have right there. But like Naga, you can go in and you can weigh in the day before. <laughs> so then you got all day to hydrate. You can go in at 225 easy. And then, you know, IBJJF 30 minutes before. As soon as your your name gets put on the big screen, it usually takes about 30 minutes for them to cycle you through on the, the mats. So you go in, you weigh in. But look, if you weigh in, if, so there's a, there's usually a, a scale on the outside <clears throat> and, and the, in the pit, and then you go to the one, the official. If you weigh in and you're one ounce over, you get DQ'd. I've seen it. I've been there watching guys, and oh, wait, they just DQ them. And yeah. there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, well, I I just think that comes with being responsible, right? Like, if you look at any combat sport, um, as far as percentages is concerned, 50% of your job is is showing up and making weight, right? You're basically fighting for free. You're getting paid to make weight. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Yeah, yeah, so that's that's a big deal. And and the UFC has had an epidemic problem because they allow um, 24 hours of the weigh-ins and this and that, and people mm-hmm. are trying to rehydrate where. I think a 1FC yeah. is different. 1FC, they, they, they actually monitor your weight the whole, that, that entire week. And if you're not, you're yeah. not, and if you're not cutting the right way, you're done. Yeah. You know, so Demetrius yeah. Johnson said he, you know, he's, he's been, felt a lot stronger and a lot healthier and his competition mm-hmm. felt, the competition felt more um, even handed. There wasn't, you yeah. know, some wrestler who could, who had this science yeah. of just cutting 15 pounds and then coming back like monstrous, like freakishly strong, like Kamaru Usman. It's, um, yes. Um, yeah. It's wild. Well, I was going to say Matt Hughes was, was, was one of those mm-hmm. guys. Josh Koscheck. Uh, um, yeah. Yeah. A uh, little quick story about Italy before we jump off of Italy. I was in Tuscany, mm-hmm. right? And there was a bakery. So I'm there getting some pastries or whatever and this and that. And then when I'm leaving at night, like my family likes to stay in and i'm like i want to go out at night and see who's out and they're like dude this is tuscany the whole the whole world shuts down at nine o'clock and it yeah. turns out she was right but on my way back home mm-hmm. that same bakery is open this is a bakery that's <laughs> open at night so i stick yeah. my head and they're all watching this small tv and on the small tv is indoor volleyball and oh, it nice. was ball and it wasn't even italy it was bulgaria versus usa and I'm like, mm-hmm. oh my God, volleyball. And they're just like, come, come sit in. They, we didn't understand a word. Yeah. I, they didn't understand a word of English. I didn't understand a word of Italian, but volleyball is a language. Yeah. So so when I said that jiu-jitsu brings a bigger crowd than volleyball, I wasn't talking about indoor volleyball. I was indoor no, volleyball. No, not indoor at all. Volleyball. No. no, indoor volleyball is always going to be a big crowd. Had Ian Satterfield yes. on the podcast talking about his time in Asia, um, doing color commentary. He had 18.4 million views on an indoor match he was calling. And I'm like, wow. and, I'm like and I'm like, yo, Tell him you know a guy. <laughs> no doubt. 18.4 million. Um, it's, dude, it's insane. Sean, I will make that trip out there and live out there for four <laughs> months just so 18 million people know know what the hell I'm talking oh, about man. when I'm talking about volleyball. It's, it's, yes. It's, it's a small world, but it's yeah. a big world. There's a lot of people out there. Yes. So, and that's, yeah. That's why Ian's a, Ian's, a, Ian's a stud, man, on and off the yeah, court. I love, I love Ian, man. He's yeah. such a good guy. He, he went is. to Norseka he, he, with Jake, and I think they yeah. were. Yeah, I think they won. I think goal. they won that. They yeah. won. They won that. Yeah, I hadn't. I don't think I've seen him because I didn't. Mm-hmm. I hadn't seen him since uh, that first Louisiana Beach week I had over there, at Coconut Beach. Right. Remember they came down and yeah, I was yeah, feeding yeah. everybody. He was eating crawfish. <laughs> I got pictures of all of us eating crawfish. Man, Johnny, he will eat I shark if it, if he wants to. <laughs> oh yeah, but yeah. But, but I, I didn't see him this that mm-hmm. second uh, that last year. Remember, I only went in to go coach the uh, kids from Son of a Saint because mm-hmm. I was busy. I was busy with a lot of other stuff with jiu jitsu. I know it was a I know it was a good event for sure. In the new with New Orleans, they had it at the same venue. But I just I wasn't. I had so much other stuff going on with business and. Mm-hmm. jiu-jitsu so what i what i did do and i'm going to do this every year i always do it mm-hmm. me um avp first and son of a saint and other non-profit organizations we normally hold a free clinic and wendy was there wendy jones wendy was there with us so she yep. had be better there and lauren was there so we got to we got to coach these kids that had probably they've never touched a volleyball and they, they they had a blast and uh we had a good group that actually was with us i feel like i'm part of the clique um, I'm part of the Sean oh, yeah. Dig, Wendy Jones, um, myself. We gotta get we gotta get an East Coaster guy. We well, gotta get an East yeah. Coaster to make it to make it look like you know uh, the, you know, the, the like unified global. Uh, <laughs> yes, we got we gotta have our yes. little Fantastic Four. We're one person short of that. Right. Yeah. So, I um Jake, I liked for Naseka when Ian and Jake won. Mm-hmm. I thought it was big for Jake because Jake, 
on these local competitions and indoors, always been in the mix, but never really had like a, a title under his belt, however small, yeah. however big. So a lot of people are like, oh, it's Norseka, it's not a big deal. But I think just right. just sometimes just getting that win and yeah. then just, and moving on with that, I thought that was really good for Jake Arudia. That's who I'm talking about, yeah. guys. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. Call him yeah. Jer- I call him Jersey Jake. Um, I know, I was about to say, he's an East Coaster. I mean, yeah. he's, one of the, he's one of those those East Coasters that came yeah. over after Mark. Yeah, he did. You know, with yeah. with Mark to, yeah. to, to be and so yeah, but man, he's he's um, he's I've I've been watching him. I don't I keep up with a couple of with a couple of guys. Of course, I keep up with Evan and I keep up with uh, Miles. Of course, I mean yeah. you got the prodigy. Yeah, of course. And then and then there's a couple other guys that you know because a lot of guys that they're they're starting to retire and they their their bodies are. I'm still waiting to see when Johnny Hyden is going to retire. Actually, him and I and a couple of other a complex up in Tennessee. We've got a couple of nice events we're going to be hosting next yeah, year just to i went throw there that out as a caveat I went so there. yeah so but but he's still going strong man 47 40 i'm 47 now so yeah. he's, he's got to be 48 yep. so he might even yeah so but um but man yeah he, i went to um there. i went to john hyden's his facility uh-huh. um hyden beach uh i'm mm-hmm. i was doing a documentary back then right it's it's still in post-production yeah. was a, which is a mother freaker dude just oh i bet it is it's gonna take months dude uh and you're and of course you're one of the people well, i talked to you, was, you, was was bruce you, white you it was you and bruce people. white yeah. yeah remember that yeah, i was doing i did you, like 18 days or something cross country yeah drove yeah. Um, you and told I, me what you were doing i was like what i think did you go see bobby jones and yeah. a couple of other bobby jones and project you, serve uh and you, Austin. Ju- and you just happened up to make when i had uh louisiana beach week juniors at mango that great? volleyball complex and Kristen nuss and awesome. close showed up too right it, it remember they showed up couldn't have been yeah they were mm-hmm. they, they, listen they they show so much love to the community and you know because Kristen, i mean she's you know they're both well they're both LSU products of LSU, but yeah. Kristen's just a homegrown Louisiana girl. You know, she's Nola though. She's a Baton Rouge, a little different, but okay. But Kristen, I mean, it, Taryn just fits in right, right there with everybody. She's, you know, I she's mean, lovable, Taryn could have so. told you she, she's from Louisiana, and you would have believed her. I mean, she, oh, you, she's you would her, her. Yeah, her virtue exactly. that the pu- yeah. let me. I want to talk about John Hyden in a minute, but I want to talk about the virtue um, that I see in Texas, yeah. um, and the, parts of Texas. Sorry. And in pretty much all of Louisiana, there is a virtue where kids say, sir and ma'am, a guy holds a chair for a girl to sit down, holds the door. There's this, this I don't know if it's safe, safe or appropriate to call it old school, that's just yeah. redeeming, it's virtuous, it's it's this place yeah. you you kind of want to you you want to you want to move there. You're like everybody. Yeah. The reason why like Joe Rogan moved to Texas is, uh, I yeah. mean, there's tax purposes too. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> California is, is murderous, but yeah. there's this old school virtue. We say we you mm-hmm. know we say grace and we say ma'am like the Hank Williams yeah, thing. It, uh, it that matters. is that is American. That's very very American. Right. Not you yeah. know not not America, but 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 like yeah. American. And that's what yeah. I I, I mean I'm. I went to Louisiana two or three times, and all three times I had this. I got the same. I, I was in the same yeah. boat. But Hyden, like I went from yeah. Louisiana to Hyden Beach in Tennessee, and I'm that. looking for this this beach. All right, I'm, I'm like, all right, it's kind of like a sand court, half beach, sand court. I get that. And as I'm driving in, and I get out of the car, I hear moo, and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> moo. <laughs> I, I said, I said yes. moo. And I just kept walking. I was in here. I heard it again. And I'm like, dude, there's cows out here. I said, there's, yes. cow, there's cows out on Hyden Beach. There's cows on Hyden Beach. And, and and I saw him running a clinic, or not a clinic, an actual practice with his club. Um, yeah. Good, uh, very capable assistant coaching staff. These, these oh, yeah. corn fed, whatever you call just big girls where you don't know mm-hmm. what's in the drinking water that makes a 13 year old look like that. Yeah. Um, and I guess because the girls' growth spurts are first, right? Guys, guys do. Yeah, guys are late bloomer yeah. girl. Um, and then it felt like volleyball again. I felt like I was on a farm. Mm-hmm. But then I'm, I, you know, I go in the court and they're like, um, "Hey, what's up?" You know, they're friendly. They don't know who I am. Some people do. Yeah. And I'm like, "All right, I'm on a volleyball court again." And I had this great conversation about what he wants to do. It's great conversation about well, how he took Los Angeles and California as far as he could go as a player, yeah. as a coach, and as and as a person who wants to um, continue to do good things for volleyball. And yeah. when a documentary comes out, definitely, I, I haven't decided with my my people. That if I'm mm-hmm. gonna do it like a ten parts uh, series, 
or a 13 yeah. part series or just a consolidation because i definitely have yeah. bruce white guys like him dude they gave me an, i was yeah. only, i was only supposed to have an eight minute interview we went 47 minutes so i mean uh, oh, easy, you know easy. yeah so Bruce yeah. White, Louisiana Beach Volleyball, big up to you, Sean Ledig. Got a great yeah, chance to talk to you at that tournament. Time wasn't timing perfect. Yeah. Timing was, was like was. Forrest Gump like, dude. That was like some, that was some it, Forrest it was, Gump stuff. It was dude. great, man. I tell you, mm -hmm. what, that was such a good tournament too. Um, how, you know, Tim, Tim and Tina mm -hmm. over there at Mangoes. That's such a that's such a great complex. Mm -hmm. And we've got actually we've got a bunch of stuff coming. I've got some things with, with them next year as well, which me and AVP have already put together in AVP America. So Baton Rouge is actually going to start seeing some some bigger events coming through, which we want to do. Baton Rouge is the state capital, you know, calling Baton Rouge, of course. That's home of LSU Tigers, who will be in the SEC championship against Georgia. You know, we, we've, we've made it back. Uh, oh, dear. We had, a, we had a rough start. My condolences you know, ahead of time. <laughs> yeah, I know Georgia's rough. But, I mean, look, Tennessee lost to yeah. Kentucky this week. And so this weekend, so it's kind of, you know, like, wow. But we'll see. Anything can happen in the SEC. We still got to – I think we've got one more game against A&M. And after right. that, it, we'll be over there in uh, in Atlanta. But yeah, and that's the thing, Atlanta. That's a home game for Georgia. So yeah. you know they're gonna. Pack, I should have had an LSU in. cup. I have an LSU cup. <laughs> I should have had that here for this. Sorry, dude. Oh, yeah. Man. So, um, so Sean, I know you. You're more comfortable talking about other people and your teammates and this and that. So let's uh, let me make you a little bit uncomfortable because I want yeah. you to talk about yourself. Um, yeah. one of the things I like about you. Uh, and I, I'd like to shape my question this way. One of the things I like about you is as a kid from Brooklyn and as a guy who's yeah. certain and who's ex-military, I'm a Gulf War vet, um, as mm -hmm. is my father before me and his father before him. One of the things I've always admired in people is to take, to have someone see what a problem is and like uh, almost seems like it's on the spot. Look at mm -hmm. it, diagnose, interpret. This is a yeah. solution. You you do this, you do that. Let's go, and then the pro and then this thing gets fixed. So one of the things that I think shaped who you are, the Sean Ladig I know, is your ability to see problems yeah. and 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 offer active solutions. Which means you yeah. will never, ever belong in California. No, yeah, I mean out here, it's <laughs> out here. If there's an unemployment problem, they, oh, they, look, they're good at interpreting the problem, right? Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you why your washer's messed up, man. It's just messed up on the inside. It's and I'm like, so, what do I do? You ever see the movie Arachnophobia? Yes. yes. Remember John uh, John Goodman? He's like, she's like, so why is my wood rotting? He's like, I'll tell you why. Bad wood. And yeah, she's like, right? so what do I do? He's like, take out the bad wood put in good wood <laughs> i'm just like no but that's here if you're unemployed it's like <laughs> damn the job yeah, yeah. situation looks sad <laughs> there you, go. You, you, gotta, you, gotta you know yeah, yeah. Well, i mean i can't oh, get man. a job no like you know what i'm talking about like there, there are so yeah. many people that are very very good at helping you diagnose the problem particularly in, in yeah. tech too I'll tell you why your yeah. computer's messed up you have this and i'm like i don't want to hear about all that just tell me what, what do i do do do, do the, so what do we do to fix it yeah, yeah so yeah. do you attribute your success success in um jiu-jitsu and your um actually a pretty meteoric rise from like when you started beach volleyball to yeah. you know to doing yeah. out things do you attribute that to your natural ability to and, and this is this is an uncomfortable question for you so, so yeah. do, let's do the best we can do you attribute that to your ability to 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 quickly um see diagnose mm -hmm. and solve um natural i don't i don't know if it's if it's a natural ability um i maybe maybe there's a little bit to that you know problem solving but look you're talking to a white man that grew up in a black neighborhood so look number one you ain't pulling the wool over my eyes no. number two if you how my buddies that i grew up with we can all talk about it half of them yes. old teeth all in their mouth yeah that's hey you had to, you had to be quick you had to do a lot of <laughs> is it, life was a little different for us you know what i mean but look look we were considered poor to the, to, to the people in my neighborhood which was mm -hmm. hilarious but you know, we made it from all that. Look, I'm all over. That that that, that was a start, which was good. But I think that that was part of how you had to be quick. You know what I mean? You put yourself in a bunch of situations. I'm not saying everything I did was always good or this or that. So you always had to be quick with it. Had to be quick on what you thought. And as far as like, I mean, problem solving, maybe that's where that, that engineering side of me comes in. But yeah, I mean, it's not a natural thing. <clears throat> I like. I would like to think it is. I mean, I like to. Be, I like to think that you know. I did watch my mother be given little and make the most and out of it. Find ways to make too. Yeah. You know. So yes. Yeah, so, I mean, and I, there's so, but complaining was never a thing 
to, to me. Like I, I wasn't going to complain. I used to watch, I used to hear people that had way more than me complain. And I was like, are you out of your fucking mind? I was like, the, the shit you're telling me or you're talking about, even as a kid, even as a middle schooler and all this other stuff, I was like, well, number one, complaining does you no good. I think, <clears throat> I think I watched, and I used to put myself in this situation. I used to watch the men that would come, that would be in my life, where there was a, a coach. That was one of the primaries. That's why I think coaching is so important. Had some great coaches um, from middle school all the way to high school and college. I mean, that were very influential. I mean, because look, even when you're in college, you're still very malleable. Your mind is, you know, when we go to college, we think we know everything. I didn't know anything. I was country come to town. I didn't know anything. I mean, I'm from, like I said, Baker, Louisiana. I didn't know anything about the world. So I was still learning and stuff like that. But it's just, I don't know. I just, I, I think, and also just watching, watching people grow up that they would put, you know, they kept themselves in certain situations, like the people I grew up with. Like there wasn't a, there was only one or two ways. There's only one or two ways out. I mean, some of these guys, they're rappers. They're rappers, like no limit rappers. And, you know, Jason Tebow, a good buddy of mine. Or you did it with sports, or you did it with education. Those are your three ways out. If not, <clears throat> I got friends that got shot up. I've got friends that committed suicide. You know what I mean? Or they didn't make it out of there. And some of them are still living in that same kind of, you know, that poverty environment because eh, they didn't they didn't want to get out or they didn't care. And some of them probably or they've been taught that. Because Sean, or yeah, they've been taught that. It was a it was a you ever, learned, hear, you ever hear the philosophy? Mentality. Sorry, you ever hear the philosophy of you will own nothing and be happy? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Continue. Sorry. Yeah, no. So, so I mean, but, the, but you're right, though. They got some people that are just like, you know, it doesn't matter. I never wanted to be like that because, I, I, I mean, I've always wanted, you know, you want nice things and you want to be things. But but like I said, it's for me, the problem solving or being able to see certain things and, and, and go to the problem solving. I think that was that was it actually was was taught to me by certain people. Like I had this guy that he was a mentor. He still is a mentor to me to this day. Joe Perone, he owned a marble shop. <clears throat> and I worked for him in high school and, and out of high school. Great wow. man. He's like a he's like a father to me. I mean, marble work. Let me tell you something about marble work. If you think if you ever did hard work, I've I've I've, I've tied post tension. I've done you know that's that's why I got into engineering. Yeah, is when I was younger, I did stuff like you know mm -hmm. construction, residential construction. I'm tying rebar, laying post tension, doing marble work, carrying marble tubs up you know up two story flights of stairs, and you think to yourself like, man. I don't know if I, how long I want to do this. <laughs> so that's that's, yeah. that's that's when you got to realize right there. Yeah. You're like, man, it's if, if I either I get an education or I continue to do this for the rest of my life. Yeah. Um, you know, so was that your first job as a kid? And my first job as a kid was actually roofing, of all yeah. things. I was 14, 15 years Jesus. old. Jesus, Mr. Henry. Mr. Oh. I was actually at my friend, my mom's friend's house, um, right by the church, and a friend of mine, his name um, Hendre, Hendre's dad, Mr. Henry, was like. This guy had a, had the most just the deepest bass voice, <clears throat> and um, I was over there playing, and they were putting up shingles, and he said, "Hey, boy, you want to come work with me?" I was like, "Sure," because I was helping him out. I mean, he was like, bring, he was like, bring, I'm like, so I'm 14, 15 years old, couldn't weigh but a buck three, buck oh three, and he's like, "Bring," the, I was bringing stuff up the ladder. I couldn't carry a pack of shingles to save my life. Now, a year after working with him, I'm carrying two packs of shingles. Might have still only been one thirty five, but I was carrying them up with no hands. You know, just I did it for while I was during the summer and then on weekends when I could help out. But that was my first job. Yeah. Um, That's pretty you know, cool. Laying down. Yeah. No, but you drive, maybe you would drive, a, drive, you know, to maybe an expensive house or like a piece of property. that's like a, um, a landmark and be like, I did that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. My no, first job. Yeah. I, yeah my yeah. first job. Um, my dad was an iron worker. He was a welder. Um, he was a foreman. Yeah. He was a foreman for the uh, American um, you know, American like locksmiths or whatever. Mm -hmm. So at that time, American had four departments, locksmiths, um, carpentry, plumbing, yeah. and um, ironwork. And he was a four person. Yeah. He was a four, four person, no, four man of American mm -hmm. ironwork. So um, he'd do that four days a week. And then the, the other three days, he had his own company called Mobile Weld. Yeah. So what we would do, we would do jobs you know someone needs like a yeah. fence for the front entrance of their business someone needs like security gates for their windows because they're on the first floor um uh, central if you look at like uh park avenue like those little fences surrounding the trees like the trees uh -huh. um yeah. i can drive by that and say that that was my work that's mine and my dad's work i did those i actually cut i actually measured those i did the blueprints i cut the steel for that you know what i'm saying nice. he, you yeah. know I, I did the painting he collected the money so 
I think there was something virtuous about the work because one, it is it isn't easy because it's hard, and two, yeah. if it if you're lucky enough where you like years later, yeah. um, you can look back on that and say that you you were part of something that was not necessarily necessarily groundbreaking, but something on a small mm -hmm. scale that helped somebody. That that teaches yeah. you to want to help people maybe on a bigger scale or maybe on the same scale right you know but yeah, when, yeah. when you but when mm -hmm. your father tells you you know this is all that it, this do not look for anything more than yeah. what you see right now this is all there is you can you're going to work harder at this and still be here so you have yeah. to ask yourself if this is what you want or if you feel like you want to help people and do things where where there's a growth for you know uh, however yeah. exponential or small where mm -hmm. you can move up somewhere because this this is he he said this just very much like people landscaping or whatever this is it this yeah. is this is the job you know and it's nothing to be yeah. ashamed yeah. or uh, ashamed of either you can be proud and do, no. do stuff like yeah. this so but I think every kid should learn the value of some equivalent level of work that requires discipline um oh, yeah. hard work um hard work and yes. yeah i think i, I wonder i'm wonder, i wonder if that's who what shaped us right i grew up yeah, in a, a think, black neighborhood I I, so. flappish avenue i grew up in a black neighborhood too right, that's right. you know yeah. how black am i my mom's black <laughs> right that's right, so, that's right huh? yeah Beautiful so black um woman too man like i mean you know yeah so but yeah i mean i, I think you're right i think hard work and a lot of well, a lot of kids, they, they don't see that. Like even my kids today, like, mm -hmm. I, you know, I've always wanted to be that. Growing up, I used to be envious mm -hmm. of kids that had a lot or right. their parents gave them stuff. I got right. hand me down to stuff like that. I'm not saying I was the bottom of the barrel because like they had people that if you, you know, my grandma used to say, go through your, go through your worries and your cares in a pile. And whenever you walk up to go pick them up and you see everybody else's, you'll be quick to grab yours and run away. Cause everybody, they, somebody out there has always got worse shit than you have. You know what I, I mean? Agree. That's just, yep. it, it's crazy. So, I always knew that in my head too. I mean, and I wasn't going to mope about what I didn't have or what I couldn't have, but man, I used to be jealous of all these with some of my friends, you know, they had their parents, but then as I got older and I understood like what it took, <clears throat> what I had to go through to get to where I'm at now financially and secure, you know, with the security and the businesses and, and just, you know, with my marriage and stuff like that, it, as a father, I understood why they were given these things. I mean, for me, I make my kids earn it though. I still have this thing of, yeah, you want it. That's cool. We can have, we can get it, but you've got to do things to get that. You've got to do chores. You've got to work this. You want this? Well, then let's just see how much you want to put up against it and I'll match it. I just think that's just the way to do it because I want them to have some kind of sense of, I don't want them to be entitled with anything. Yeah. I just, I don't want that to be the case. So hard work, <clears throat> if you can instill a hard work ethic in kids, then I think that it, it grows that way. But like between me and you, and you can, you can tell me if I'm wrong with this, but I, I think with, I don't think that you can be this rich, well-off kid and get into a fighting, um, any kind of fight. Like you, you're not, you don't see professional boxers. You don't see, you know, the, the, the best MMA fighters. They're not a bunch of rich kids that tried to try this out. They're usually people that started from the bottom and had to work their way up. There's just a certain type of grit that comes with you having to do that. So maybe that's, maybe that's where, where it came from. Cause I mean, <clears throat> you know me, I'm, I, I don't, yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm destined to win. So if I'm losing right now, it's not over. Right. That's it. Yeah. And that's, that's my mindset. I'm not, it's never over. And I, and I try, <laughs> yeah. And I, yeah and, and I, and I try not, yeah, you're right. It's never over. And I try not to sound, I try to be humble and I try to be humble about certain, but, and it's hard. Mm. It's hard for me to be humble because I know where I came from. And yeah, I can look back and say, oh, you know, have a, I can empathize with where I've come from, but mm. I mean, you know, I like to, I got to have a little confidence. You I do have think, some confidence. I do agree with you. Um, and I'll, I'm, um, I'm not trying to speak safe here, but I'm just trying to be real on a general level. If you already have everything that's handed to you, you're, you're, you're not going to be as driven as someone who is not. There's the old saying, remember the Conor McGregor thing or um, yeah. uh, Floyd Mayweather? It's hard to get out of bed when you have a hundred million dollars in the bank. <laughs> Right. Who want to get yeah. out to who want to get out of bed to train, right? So I can yeah. so I, and mind you, those are people who had to scratch to get with what they want that arrived there. I can't yeah. imagine someone who who doesn't even recognize that. Now, of course, yeah. I'm going to give credit to some of the outliers. Some kids who are born rich mm -hmm. or whatever, but then they see yeah. something and they realize and they try it and they get their butt kicked and then they have this mm -hmm. mental realization, wait, I got to do more. 
if, if yeah. I, I have to put in more <laughs> and how bad do I want it? So if you see a rich kid yeah. that's playing yeah. volleyball, right? That, that succeeds mm -hmm. in volleyball. That meant yeah. they look, they had the money to pay for the camps and this and that, and they had the money to pay for the yeah. best coaching, but yeah, there has yeah. to be this level. Maybe they got their butt kicked in a tournament by two girls they never met that they thought they All were right. entitled to beat. Sometimes yeah. they, I'm going to let you talk in a minute, but that's that they're, they're, something happens this inciting incident that drives them to say, Hey, I got the best coaching that money can buy. I got to use, I got to use yeah. this. So I don't, I mean, I, yeah. I'm always going to devalue them more because they've had more opportunities to run yeah. that hundred meter dash that other people have to run 150 meters for. Right. So there's always going to be yeah. now, um, before there was this resentment, uh, but now mm -hmm. it's just the, it's just an acceptance and reality, right? Because yeah. that's what poor people listen. Isn't that what we tell poor people? Yeah. Oh, you're poor because you don't want to lift yourself up by your bootstraps, right? And then when you get this yeah. job and you work at this job for ten years, you don't get a promotion. It's like, oh, you don't want to work anymore. No, you 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 as someone like that, you try to appreciate, but you feel you deserve more, and they're in the right yeah. to feel that way too. So so I'm always going to value the person who who. Um, um, had to break eggs to make the omelet. Had to actually break yeah. the damn eggs to make the omelet. All right, who um, oh, yeah. who di didn't? They weren't diamonds. They were they were coal <laughs> that right. that had that's to right. become a diamond. It had to become a diamond yeah. in a rough. So there's always that's, right. that's always a better story to tell on a general on a general level. But on my personal yeah. on my personal level, <clears throat> I will always appreciate that because we I, I've. I was that person. I am that person. And, yeah. um, and juniors, let me tell you something, juniors in the South Bay, the reason why I left coaching in the South Bay is I, I, I just didn't want to coach them anymore. I, I look, we, yeah. Sean, if you remember 2019, I had a group of girls, right? Yeah. They're all in their sophomore year mm -hmm. in college, right? And the yeah. summer. And I'm like, good, this is a good time for me to step out. You know, me and Duran, yeah. we weren't getting along anyway, but that's a whole other story about me, but we're, <laughs> we're chill. No, but we're friends. We're chill. Me, yeah, me and Duran yeah. are chill. But, Right now, I'm in Culver City, inland, bunch of players who don't have a lot of money. Um, you know, Jason mm -hmm. sets up scholarships or whatever. Jason Olive, yeah. the program director, mm -hmm. a bunch of girls who are interested in volleyball, and maybe they play in their little Catholic school team or, or public school team, but they don't have the coaching. They have a school teacher doing it that want to get yeah. better at it. And boom, all of a sudden, you got this fantastic, savage coaching staff that's like, boom, you know? Like, um, my friend yeah. my friend from New York said one of his players is actually living out of her <clears throat> car, <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> you know? Wow. And, and just going through some miserable times but when she he said when she when she walks into the gym like her face lights up and she's smiling and she's she's playing volleyball she's competing she's rolling with the pack of girls yes. doesn't have a care in the world and and mm -hmm. at least in this dimension she looks like she's one of them because yeah. what you what we done is teachers educators mm -hmm. uh, um yeah. coaches mentors have shown mm -hmm. them that you you you're not you're not in this and you're okay financially your, your situation or whatever is messed up but you're not in this completely you shouldn't feel alienated because they have this and you don't correct you know what i'm yeah. saying you you can't you have yeah. to you um it's so it's it's so difficult to put into words but the best way i know how to explain it is that like that girl living in her car is the reason why jason made la volleyball club <laughs> yeah. he, you know he's that, huh? it's, it's the reason why you mm -hmm. know what i'm saying she's not part of our club she's part of a club in new york or whatever uh, um yeah. a, another friend who's a coach i'm not going to talk about mm -hmm. names or even that coach but i'm like stories like that are the reason why only me personally look i'm i'm good yeah. stein good for you man la volleyball club right dane do your clinics man you know yeah. um, um you know i'm um, Give them the best training money could buy because those parents are going to pay for it and, and, and charge as much as you can because they'll pay for it. Sure. That's right. M more That's so right. than adults. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I'm not trying to say my way is more noble. I'm not trying to say my way mm -hmm. is mo a, a more virtuous. Um, yeah. Maybe on a general level it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. What yeah. That's that's a reality, too, that they have to yeah. face because that, that yeah. door swings both ways. Uh, um, but on a specific level, I'm just going to say it's different. I wanted something different. Yeah. I wanted to yeah. I wanted to do something a little bit more with less, which is what my reputation's always been. Which, right? Yeah, which just ask Jake Urudia, right? We were talking about Jake, right? Uh -huh. What was his only yeah. main draw? His only main draw was Hermosa Beach with Earl so Schultz. Did you coach? And yeah. who was the coach? You were coaching him. That oh, was me. Earl. So, um, yeah, I, so how's, how's Earl? How's Earl doing out there? Oh man, it's Earl's right a smart. Now. Earl's in grad school right now, and yeah, and yeah. he knows even, that's even when better. you're in grad school, you can't be like bullcrapping your way through grades. 
you know no, you because that's your profession right you can't <laughs> like undergrad right. Dude, I swagged my way through some courses and still got A's. And, you know, maybe that's how I'm built or whatever. Yeah. But I know in grad yeah. school, like, Earl, Earl, Earl's got a brain in his head, and he's using all that time. Yeah, he does. A yeah. bunch of those guys do, which was always – I was always – I always I like that because a lot of, you know, a lot of volleyball players at, a, at, a, at that level, they do have some of those younger players that have good hit, got good, good hit on their shoulders. Of course, the girls always seem to be top oh tier. God, <laughs> they so all smart. have all these degrees. The savages, they're they're built, you know. Yeah. I mean, they're 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 athletes, and it's just amazing. And you know, you've got a mix of the guys. You got those guys that are kind of like beach bums, and then the mm -hmm. other part of them are, you know, they're they're did, college grads. And but didn't we talk so, about the correlation? Uh, juniors, oh yeah. uh, juniors, girls, uh, and like they're all straight yeah. A students, right? <clears throat> yes, I, did I talk yes. to you about that? I talked to Bruce White. Did did, no, did we have well, that conversation? We, 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 we had talked about that before, and I mean, it, uh -huh. but it's the truth though, and I, and I think it's a. I think it's 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 part of the coaching, but it's part of the lifestyle and the group. Because I mean, look, it. I, I think what we were talking about just now when you were talking about um, kids, like saying underprivileged kid is able to come around. But and and what it made me think of was is look, com competitive BJJ is the same way. It's like you know, like look, I, I kind of almost think about it. You know, do I put my, myself at forty seven? Do I put myself at the ringer? Yes, but my team, my teammates, my professors, my coaches. Even the guys that don't compete, they know where I'm at, you know, the, uh, athletically and, and stuff. But I look forward to going in there and getting my ass kicked for 30 to 45 minutes. On Saturdays, it it's 10 five-minute rounds with mm -hmm. savages, man. These black belts are like magicians. And even when I think, I'm like, oh, I can handle that guy just with athletic ability. And then I'm, I got snot bubbles coming out in three minutes. Nice. You know, but look, I, and I give it to – look, I give it back. Not, not at the rate they give it to me, but – and it's, you know, I'm almost, I'm, I'm little over, I'm almost two years into it, you know, um, which is good. I think I'm at a point, but, um, but like it's, it, it, it's build it's building a lot of stuff in me, even at this age. So that's why, you know, I look at the girls when I'm coaching and it's actually changed a lot of the ways, the things that I do with coaching, coaching BJJ with the kids and even some of the kids that I've been coaching with, uh, volleyball. And I think a lot of it has to do with, it's even, it's increased my mental my uh, mental fortitude and just my toughness. That's a wild thing. So, How, um, I mean, I'm, yeah, I want, I got a five year old. I want her to do jujitsu classes. I mean, right now she's in every sport. Play. She's in a tennis cause mommy played tennis. Mommy, mm -hmm. mommy was a yeah. top 50 player when she played tennis. Yeah. Um, you know, and the whole family knows how to swing a golf club and soccer is mm -hmm. soccer and kids yeah. is like a horse and carriage. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah. how, how, um, much which would someone like a five-year-old get out of just like jujitsu lessons so that so that's when um, storm started for, and and it, mm -hmm. it, it depends on where you take them and, and if they're geared for everything but i mean five to me five between five and six is the perfect age uh, we they, we do have some younger ones than that but five to nine I've, and, and i've been is it's just it, it's a very pivotal age in that nine to twelve but what i've done is and so you know i've coached the basketball teams i've coached the volleyball teams the football teams Every, every sport that I've probably played, I try to coach, especially since with my kids. If my kids played it, I'm going to coach it just so I can have more quality time with them. But what I've done lately is a couple of these timid kids that I had, you know, Sam is one of them, and I mean, his mother will tell you, but I've taken three or four that I thought were real timid on the soccer on the soccer field or the basketball court. I said, hey, why don't you bring them to jiu-jitsu to try it out? They're like, oh, I don't know about that. And now these kids, a year later, are actually just – they're, they've done a complete 180. I mean, they're savages on the on the soccer field. Kids that would be, they would see the pile build up and they would stand away. They're in there getting the ball now. Or kids like Sam. This little kid, he would get angry about everything on the basketball court. I was like, slow down, Turbo. I said, look, we got to be cool. This is basketball. You got to be cool. You got to be, you know, he's and he's the same way. He participates with everything now. And she's like, it's been the best thing for him. I was like, trust me. I said, I think, you know, and I know it depends on the, the coaches and the in the atmosphere but i mean that's with gracie united with the gyms that we have in baton rouge ascension hammond uh slide l I, I train at all these different gyms because it kind of goes into my uh because every gym has a group of savages like i mean you know they got they, they got different competitors and stuff like that but and i go because they're different professors and it's just like me going to another gym so i get to learn some new stuff and that's another the thing that's good about us is i have the ability to do that with these kids like watching them with that group and then take them to another group it just builds confidence in them from one group like soren i take soren to different gyms and like I, you, you should see him he's he's changed a lot in these past two years i mean he had a he had a fight 
at, at, uh, from from a schoolmate. Mm. And it was because he was getting bullied, and he asked me what to do. And I, I mean, 15 seconds of fame, but kid was older and bigger than him. Yeah. And I said, do, do, do jiu-jitsu. <clears throat> well, I left. I left the house, and, so, and Seth sends me a video, my oldest son. He was outside, and these four or five little kids are next door in the, in the, in the lot, and the kid pushed Soren. Well, Soren, you know, he does jiu-jitsu, striking, some other stuff, and grappling. Grabs him by the shirt and gives him a three piece in the mouth, <laughs> like bop, bop, bop. Oh my god! And I'm like, I'm watching, I'm watching this video. I'm like, uh, oh my god! It's like, oh my god! This is yeah. so. The kid's bigger than him, so he grabs Soren, threw him on the ground, and Soren sits out and takes his back. Mm. So he's rear naked choking this kid, and you can hear the kid yelling, "Let go, let go!" And Soren didn't let go right away, and he's like, "I'm, I'm, I'm done, I'm done." Soren let him go, and then he, uh, he, that was, that was it. And I said, yeah. well, how you and you buddies, how, how are y'all doing now on the bus? He's like, oh, we're friends. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they're only seven and eight years Isn't old. Isn't it so weird but, that kids have to fight to be friends? <laughs> yeah. You're like, tell but, me about I, it. <laughs> I know, I know. And, but that's, it's just wild. I'm like, mm-hmm. but ever since then, he's been okay. And, you know, I told him, mean, that's the biggest thing I tell, I, I, yeah. I tell the kids. It's like, it's bully prevention, guys. Yeah. You know, not to say that. You know, a blue sticker is not going to get your kid, save your kid from getting his ass kicked. No. A little a blue belt eventually as he gets older will, yeah. you know, but, but I've been watching kids and, and parents tell me that, but I mean, but for little girls, mm-hmm. I mean, the, the little girls are savages. Kids, yeah. girls 14 and under, maybe 12 and under, it's mm-hmm. because of the testosterone kicks in, right. but uh, they, they whipped it. They whipped the brakes off of boys. Soren, I think one of his two two yeah. losses in competition are from a nine. You know, he has to compete up because of his weight. Yeah, because he's a he's a big kid. But um, but the girls, they're they're just so aggressive and they're do, savages. Do you know how so, I survived? <laughs> do you know how I survived on Flatbush Avenue? My older sister <laughs> protected me. I was a, I was a mama's boy, man. Oh, I was man. a mama's boy, and then at some point, you know, like she had a falling out with my mom, and she had to leave the house at fourteen. So that's yeah. just a, one of the many stories my broken family has to tell. Was that is um, that your sister in the military? Older sister. Yeah. I have an older one. We're yeah, eleven yeah. months apart. No one knows about. It. Okay. Um, okay. She was part of every gang in New York you think of. She was a Decepticon. Oh, she was part of MOB. <sighs> Um, yeah. and of course the peaceful Zulu nation, one of their chapters, but, mm-hmm. but, um, at some point because she got, she left, got sent away or had to leave. Um, and she instilled this Brooklyn virtue in me. And it's, it's not something I prescribe to everybody else. Cause it doesn't really make sense. It only makes sense to us. Yeah. If someone picks on you and you let them in our mind, in our Brooklyn mind, we think mm-hmm. that they get to walk around like it's, it's okay to do it yeah. whenever they want. And it doesn't, right. and in our Brooklyn mind, it doesn't stop, like letting them do it doesn't stop there. Yeah. So it's really instilled this in, this insecurity a lot of Brooklyn guys have, like oh, someone's always mm-hmm. talking about them or someone has to has something to say about them and this and that, and then yeah. you, you just want, you have to stand up for yourself for, uh you know, you're incapable of solving real problems right now because you're hysterical about imaginary ones, you know? So, yeah, right. um, so that's what helped me. My dad box golden gloves which helped. Yeah. So he taught me how to use my hands, but I was still scared because I was 220, I was 250 pounds in high school. And I felt like if I hit someone, I would hurt them. I didn't, want, I didn't really want to yeah. hurt nobody. I could hit yeah. someone hard enough uh, without any skill and, and hurt them. Yeah. I can fall on them. I could choke the life out of someone and hurt them and not with no training, you know, because you're yeah, big. Size, but, ma- but, size matters and yeah. all that stuff. You know what yeah, I mean? the bigger they are, the bigger I, I they love- are. <laughs> I love to hear people in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu like, oh, it doesn't matter. Like, yeah. uh, yes, it does. Yeah. Size matters. Uh, yeah. Your age matters. I mean, yeah. and it's it's kind of a common fact. There's too. levels like, I've to competed. that. Yeah. I've, there's levels to all of it. Like, right. you know, your belt, like they say, if when you give up, um, say, five to 10 years, that's about a belt. Right. You know, a belt. Um, and then if you give up every 10 or 15 pounds or 20, 25, you're giving up another belt, another level. So I mean, yeah, it all matters. It, it really does. So yeah, you're right. I mean, and that's that's a smart thing as a big as a big mm-hmm. as a big human being or a big person. You know, you, you're capable of doing some damage that you probably don't want to do to people. You yeah. know, so that, well, that's a good. I'm, I'm just glad that I I could see more clearly on some situations. You know, I've improved on that. And, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, for an example, I'd like to tell you a part of my weekend. Uh, juniors i was coaching the LA volleyball club this weekend right so i go to momentous misty may arena right last yeah. year my, remember, my, remember my king of the beach chair the like the director's uh-huh. chair i yeah. reported that missing last year and i said i was going to come back and get it and they called me they said no one mm-hmm. turned it in right so when yeah. i drive up um one of the parents sends me a picture of my chair and says your chair is here 
So I roll up to see where my chair is and like front uh -huh. security who's paying money, uh, collecting money for parking is sitting yeah. in my chair. So I walk up oh to him and I'm gosh. like, uh, that's my chair. And he's like, really? I said, yes. I said, that's my sponsor. And I got two queen of the beach chairs matching indoor. And they're like, what, they're like, what evidence do you have that this is your chair? And I said, get the f out of here. And I picked up the chair and I walked away. <laughs> I said, get the f out of here. It says yeah. king. You know what? That, no, that's code for it. it says king of the beach. How many of yeah. these chairs you think are in circulation? What kind of lie you think you're going to tell me where you got this chair? You, you yeah, know what right. I'm saying? So I, I said, get the fuck out of here. And I took my chair. So indoor, <laughs> it is loud. And it Anyone that's coach indoor that's not coaching beach, I'm going to remind you what you don't miss about it, all right? Indoor, I, ha I literally have my libero position five next to me on the sideline. And I'm like, switch out. She can't hear me. And now I'm like, switch, switch. And now it sounds like I'm yelling at my kids. I'm trying to get the rest yeah. attention. I'm, I'm yelling at the, 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 the referee, right? Um, I pointed the line, just like, what's the call? And the, you know, talking with my hands now looks, now looks aggressive, right? Uh, um, mm -hmm. And Saturday was just a bad day because I got called out of rotation eight times because I gave my lineup, but they put it in the book the wrong way. So the ref's oh just trying gosh. to, so the top ref's trying to do his job. He's just out of rotation, yeah. next play. Out. So like five times in a row got called. Now I was just, I, I was just going to tell my captain, pack, we're leaving. We're out of here. I, yeah. I don't want to, I don't yeah. want to do that anymore. And, uh, but, but they fixed it. Um, they, they told Jason and Jason's like, he doesn't care, <laughs> you know, cause Jason doesn't care because they don't want to see video. They just want to bitch. Yeah. Correct. If I told them I have a video of the entire game, look, look at the whole video in its entirety. And you tell me if that story is correct. Oh, we don't want to bother. They don't want to bother with that. Cause that's, cause actually looking for the truth is, uh, requires too much work. Yeah. Right. And that was right. just Saturday. So Sunday happens. And I'm the I'm calm because I'm a Pat Riley coach. I sit in my in that chair, and I don't mm -hmm. get up unless I'm calling timeout or unless something can't wait. Cause cause I like yeah. my kids to be independent thinkers. I don't I don't I'm not like free free go out go out you know down yeah. down. I'm not that coach. I'm not yeah. that guy. Yeah. Um. I'm that guy in practice. But um. Mm -hmm. Jason comes, joins me at the end of the day, sees me chilling, <laughs> and the last match to take first place, ball goes. Um, they call a the ball out, but it was in. I tell the ref, no, nah, that's their ball. That's in. Of course, they yeah. believe me because it benefits them. Another ball's yeah. um, out. The um, Another ball might have been in or out. The ref calls in. They huddle up. They call a replay. And I'm just like, okay, cool, fine. There's a back row attacker. They huddle up with the ref, decided her hand wasn't above, above the hand and uh, the height of the net, though the ball, went, the trajectory went like this. <laughs> yeah. Right? It didn't go up and down. And then finally, we're up 11-9 somehow, some way. We hit a ball, girl swipes at it on the way out, says no touch. Line judge calls no touch. The referee overrules and says she's a touch. They huddle yeah. up and decide to give them the ball again. And Jason just like, look, look. So Jason, what Jason does, he does a tactical thing. He says, I want to check the book because the score is wrong. He doesn't want to yeah. protest the call. And then all of a sudden he protests and then the, the, the guy comes and holds up the show. Their parents are mad at Jason. They're talking to him, but he's not really listening. And yeah. we get screwed on the call. And we, they give them an extra point. They get two points. So now it's 11-11 uh -huh. when we should have been 11-9. Yeah. And we still won, right? Yeah. But the, the, and I took too long to take this story to get to the good part. This is the good part. I, I leave. And one of the parents is like, coach, is you okay being a cheater? You know? And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, che I, was like che I was like, cheater, right? He, he's, like, he's like, yeah, you cheated out there. I said, I don't, I don't make the calls. The ref does. And you're okay with that, right? And I'm like, am I a cheater or am I okay with that? What are you asking me right now? Yeah. I said, I didn't do, dude, I didn't do that to you. They did, yeah. you know? Uh, um, and he's like, he says, you're a piece of shit and you're a cheater. Oh my God. And, you're a <laughs> and he gets in his pickup. Cause that's yeah, what makes him feel hard. Cause, cause that's what guys in pickups do, right? They, know, you, you, you drive a pickup. So now you got a big, right? So, mm -hmm. um, and now, now I'm really going off. I'm sorry, but, but, um, <laughs> I'm like, when he did that, I said, um, see you next time, you know, uh, or no better luck yeah. next time. Cause you won. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that was supposed to feel good. Like, like you could yeah. forgive all that shit if you win, but that with the way yeah. he left, man, it, it rubbed me the wrong way. And I was like, you. what if Jason, hey. what if the Jason from <sighs> Brooklyn yeah. said, yo, why don't you come say that to my face? And you, you yeah, said, exactly. and I was thinking exactly what you were thinking. Three piece in a soda. 
I was thinking yeah, one, two, like, like one, two, <laughs> let him right. come around, and then the third one. So it's a one, two, right? And then that's when he right. comes around, pop, pop him again. So that, we call that a yeah. three-piece in a soda. Uh-huh. And I'm oh, yeah. like, this, what is it with Californians that they think that somebody ain't going to, that, that someone's well, not going to roll up and say, hey, say that again. It's, and, because, it's because they've gotten away with it yeah. for so long. And Jason, yeah. Jason was like, look, dude, we won, and life goes on. And I'm like, it's yeah. this is a day later, and I'm emotional right now. It still doesn't sit well with me. It, it, yeah. should, it should have sat well with me because I'm older, I'm more mature. Yeah. Uh, um, and, you know, and again, at the end of the day, there's something gratifying about going through all that stuff, being antagonized. And you're like, dude, I forgive all of my players can pull this out and win. <laughs> I could just, yeah. this is, I forget about the whole mess and my players could just, you know, and then if they win, you could go in the huddle and give them a story about mental toughness, right? We yeah. tell them, hey, oh, yeah. hey, we could have lost because of those calls, right? And yeah. everyone would have understood you got screwed, right? Or you could do some champ stuff. You know, yeah. you can win in spite of those calls. And I'm tonight. I'm yeah. gonna tell him the story about Dane Blanton uh, um, in Portugal. What happened with the? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know if you. Um, no. bear, bear with me again. Thirty seconds. Portugal semifinals, mm -hmm. Olympics, Sydney, ten ten side out. Right. So ten ten. That took an hour, <laughs> forty five yeah, minutes yeah, to get right? to ten ten. Right. <laughs> so Fanoi. <laughs> so Fanoi hits the ball wide. So they call timeout. They get back on the court. The referee skips the yellow, gives him a red card for delay of game. So now they're not just down the one, they're down two. Yeah. Uh, after all of that time, they get to 10 10. And Dane, that, that could have made them lose, but not Dane. Dane goes back, they get the ball back. Dane serves an ace mm -hmm. out of position one, wrist away ace, position five, you know, line jumps, boom. Um, third serve, Fanoi gets a block. Uh, the fourth serve, pokey dig on transition and then hit and then the fifth serve ace right down the middle tweener so what took an hour to get to 10 10 they finished in about a minute and 40 seconds just five straight points guys. and dane was like the thing i learned was like dude i gotta thank the ref you know he you know he actually yeah. gave me that extra bit of energy and i'm like that's not what i got what i got was that yeah. if you lost because of that everyone would have understood yeah. it usa would have still had your back <laughs> You know, right? <laughs> like, oh, we got yeah. screwed. No fair. Where, where, where? Uh, um, but yeah. no, no, they were on some champ, dude. Yeah, they were on they some were. championship. So that was the redeeming thing I got this weekend. Got my chair back, yeah. which I will well, never take plus. to an indoor event I, again. I will never I take that say, chair. I would, I would leave that. I would keep that with you at all times. Yes, because you know how that so stuff walks away from yeah. those indoor events like it's nobody's business. I've taken bag. that chair to beach events, yeah, ten times and never got stolen. In fact, people know it's mine. And they're yeah. like, they'll, they'll sit in my chair and they'll send me a text while I'm on another court. Best chair yeah. ever. ever. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yes. Oh man, did you yeah. see uh, Phoenix AVP? Uh, no, I, well, no, I watched. I watched the highlights of it. Yeah. Like you know, I mean, been busier than a one on paper mm -hmm. hanger. So yeah. I mean, a lot as long if I can get in and see. Like I said, I try to watch anything that Evan and them have to do with. I watch their matches and like Kristen and all them, but. It seems like people, everybody, from what it sounded like, they enjoyed the yeah. event. I mean, the event looked like it was super nice. I mean, right. like, remember, I I talked to you about one time. I said, that would be a very big or unique venue to do it in the Superdome. You yeah. know, Bally's does on the Superdome now, so that's not far-fetched, to be honest with you. Right. But but it seemed like everybody liked the event. Um, yeah. And in, indoor beach and facilities are, would be the, ideal. Yes. I mean, they've been around for long enough. So, I mean, look, that's actually people are like, oh, there's no wind, there's no this. Well, that you still got to change your game up. Remember, we had the indoor complex at Diggs that people would come all the way from Florida, from Texas to come and train in because when it gets mm -hmm. cold, Texas, I mean, Dallas has some indoor yeah. uh, complexes. I don't know if Houston does right now, but we would get some some monster games yeah. over there and, you know, people lining up. But it, you do who have to said, change your game with that But indoor. who says, who, who made up this rule? All right, sorry, who made up this rule? that the only way for you to get respect is to go in the shittiest conditions possible for you and play against people who are used to those conditions. Who yeah, made up this, this asinine rule? It's asinine, asa 10, and asa 12. All right? Yeah. Who made up this rule that it has to be deep sand, there has to be sun, you, yeah. uh, uh, um, and it has to be in this venue uh, and, and beat people who train in those conditions that they're comfortable Correct. in uh, every day of the week? Yes. Get the hell yes. out of here. Who you got to be, yeah. Qatar? You got to be Qatar to get respect? <laughs> I mean, right. come on. Exactly. I mean, that's, that's, that's like, what Qatar did. They, they, went and, they went and still housed Trevor and tried. <laughs> they, they did, man. Those guys are amazing. Just like the Swedes. I've been keeping up with the Swedes as well, those boys. 
they're ridiculous. Like I, the game's changed. It's, mm-hmm. it's done. I mean, I, I look at I look at what's going on, and it, you know, we've always talked about the prototypical size mm-hmm. and the skill of what they have. Man, these guys are six nine, seven foot tall, and doing things that you see people that are six three doing. Yeah, six four. I mean, it's ridiculous. Yeah. But like, but they have definitely changed and stuff. But, but I definitely want to see some more indoor events. I think it'll I think it'll benefit. And another thing that it can do is that it actually can prolong. It can it can make the season longer because they can do it wherever they want to do it. And they don't have to worry about the elements. I mean, down here in Louisiana, you always got to worry about like humidity, the rain, yeah. humidity and the rain. I mean, yeah. but if you do it inside one of the, the smoothie King center, you do it inside the Superdome. you know, I'll be giving Jeff and them a call sometime in a couple yeah. of weeks. The South Bay think up. they know what hot conditions are. Yeah, <laughs> really? Exactly. No, it's, it's 72 difference. degrees every day of the week out here in the winter. Yeah. No, they yeah. do not know what hot and humid conditions are. No, no, unless no, you no, unless no. you train you, under the iron of Kristen Nuss and Taron Club. I'm telling you, you go to Baton Rouge, New Orleans, mm-hmm. Houston, anything south of Houston, um, anything in South Florida, even in South Florida, people don't realize that you're going to be South South Florida gets so hot, it's ridiculous. <laughs> but I mean, you know, I mean, that's why I was so happy to play all these tournaments up in mm-hmm. Michigan and Ohio. I'm thinking like. Man, this is great. I'm not about to cramp out. You know, it's the finals, and I'm not cramping out. So, and but but yeah, it's. I think the indoor thing should catch on. I think they should do. If you want to know my my, my take on it, I mean, I don't have a lot of say so, but I mean, three indoor events, three, and then you've got the three gold events, and those are the big money tournaments. And then you should probably then you can you can pick and choose new venues that you think maybe. I knew, I know that what's the one they did in Michigan? Was that Muskegon? Was that uh? Yeah. Muskegon like, turned mean, out to be a pretty good yeah. one, man. And you got a lot of people yeah. from there too. You have a lot of people yeah. who are um, like main draw attractions who happen to be from there. So like yeah. I, I, what, Logan Midwest. Weber, um, yeah, he's, Doc he's, Vandermeer, he's, Jeff Samuels. Yeah. All those guys. So you got all, I mean, they've got, you know, and then, I mean, what was really upsetting is, I mean, not upsetting, but I mean, you know, my favorite New York, yeah. they didn't have New York and I don't know why they didn't have that. I don't know. No. But, I mean, that's well, like, you know, I think, I the, you know, it's bad though how Atlantic city went down um, know, at yeah. being in Atlantic city, the, mm. the third week of July in yeah. the middle of the summer in a, in a beach that's already uh, aesthetically a dump that the place yeah. is a dump. It even looks like yeah, a dump. It, it feels well, like a dump, the, but you, you, was... you go on this bad sand, you know, you're avoiding needles, never mind pins. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah. On the boardwalk. So you're yeah, on this that's... crappy sand under this broken down boardwalk, under these yeah. second rate casinos, mm-hmm. and the heat picks up on this bad sand, and yeah. you have five players that have third degree burns. burns. Jeff, oh, Jeff Samuels, I was his burns. coach in Manhattan Beach. I talked yeah. the dude out of um, Seaside. Yeah. I talked him out of Seaside. I said, if, because he played Manhattan Sixes and that was a human day too, human day too in the South mm-hmm. Bay. Yeah. And I said, if you go to Seaside, you will not finish that tournament and you'll make your feet worse where you won't uh, get, you won't be able to play in Manhattan Beach. And at least in Manhattan Beach, yeah. you're paid, you get paid to show. You got draw points, you're paid right. to show. So, you know, be, yeah. spend, spend, stay at my house, you know, come chill with me, learn how to walk again, <laughs> learn how to run again with yeah. those feet. David Lee, right? Actually, yeah. had they had a, had a toenail, lost a toenail. It was so hot, it's and because so him and Cody I mean, Caldwell won. But I, but I think the point I was trying to make, whoever's mistake it was, it doesn't matter. But them going to that particular area in the East Coast yeah, at that time yeah. of year under those conditions have doomed the AVP's association with these, the East Coast. It's yeah. not going to happen yeah. again. It's not going to happen yeah. again for a long time. And and, and they yeah. messed up with New York City because New York City, changing it from Pier Twenty Five. Uh, keeping the yes. qualifier there and moving it, mm-hmm. uh, building that venue was a success. Yeah. It was, yeah. They, do they realize the conglomerate of fans they had? This isn't Manhattan oh, Beach where guys are just rolling up on their bikes, driving, you know, riding their bikes from to Hermosa yeah. or, or like, um, you know, Redondo or whatever, and they can ride their bike, mm-hmm. park their bike, and then see this event. Yeah. It's not like Manhattan Beach where these guys just roll out of bed and you can watch it from your from your your, your roof deck on or, your or, balcony. Yeah, your, your balcony because yeah. I don't Manhattan Beach. You can't build roof decks anymore. They unless you're grandfathered in, which is why I live in yeah. Hermosa. But um, do they realize that in New York City? You can find six guys from Columbia, a bunch of Russians from Brighton Beach, right? A bunch yep. of freaking Polish right. dudes from South Brooklyn, the Dominicans yeah. uptown, the Koreans in Flushing, the Chinese from Chinatown, um, 
high school, the, the high school exceptional seniors game had like 38 kids yeah. all in a went, took up a whole section. Do you realize the diversity of the crowd you attracted that's only, oh, yeah. that cannot hurt the sport as far as promoting it and make it more popular? It can only yeah. hurt, you know? <laughs> Yeah. Spend the money. If yeah. it's too expensive, yeah. make yeah. a decision. Make a decision if you want to be a real a real sport. Make yeah. a decision yeah. uh, if you want to be a real sport. If you want to say I can't do this because I'm too expensive. All right. It's yeah. It's it's to me. It's I mean Manhattan is you know like that's a good venue. Of course, that's just the granddad of them all. Yeah. But there's something about New York, and I've mm -hmm. always had I've always had the, the I've, I've been lucky enough to play you know like that center court match when we played against Ricardo and then it's like what. 10 o'clock in the morning, 11 o'clock in the morning. And that place was packed, of course, to see, yeah. you know, Ricardo and, and Cam, but uh, shock, but, uh, but like, yeah, it's, it, but it's just the venue they had of that and the way that it was built. And it just, it brought every, I mean, the weekend. And that was a qualifier. There. That was Ricardo and shock, yeah, right? Exactly. Yeah. Come exactly. on. So, I mean, just, the, 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 but the whole weekend, like the whole, from Thursday to Sunday, that it was packed. The whole pier was, was jumping. Mm -hmm. And you just kind of wonder like, man, why isn't it? Why, why? I mean, I understand that the COVID stuff that, that, that killed a lot of stuff, but I mean, it's, it should come back. I think that's one that they definitely need to bring back. You know, Chicago is one of those. I think the gold series should be New York, Chicago, and Manhattan, you know, I mean, that's and, just me. And New York would like, pay. Right. And if they, if yeah, they cool. decided to charge tickets, <laughs> Um, like Manhattan Beach was a free event, unless you're you doing courtside of this yeah. or that. Yeah. If they just decided yeah. to charge general admission, in addition yeah. to whatever, then New York. Yep. If you want them, you if it's too expensive, charge yeah. money and New Yorkers will pay for it. They will charge money for, for general admission, and I'm telling you, I swear to you, admission and twenty five New Yorkers will pay for twenty five day long. Yeah, I mean you, you're going to be yeah. able to get it, you know. And I mean Austin's going to get it. And courtside, the so Wall gonna... Street and courtside seats, the Wall Street guys are just saying they t name your number. Yeah, yeah. Tell me your yeah, number. They do, and it. I got it. They were always filled up. Every yeah. cabana that was on the side was filled up. So that you know, but hopefully that's some things. I mean, I'm you know, I definitely want to do some traveling, and I want to go some some of the venues next year to to be there and present and stuff like that. But that's hopefully that's one that they bring back because I'd like I'd like to see everybody and and get to spend a you know I like spending time in New York anyway. I take a week and try to get there by Tuesday, just like me and Cam used to. Me and Cameron Beans I always used to do. I was like, let me meet me up there earlier, and get to spend a couple of days in New York before we played and and do stuff like that, and then have a good weekend there. You know, so, I'm gonna go where I'm appreciated. I'm gonna look if I'm yeah. if I'm going there just as a fan to see some people or whatever. If I'm go, if my function there is as a, mm -hmm. is there as a coach right yeah. uh, um that's fine too uh but if i know ahead of time someone wants me to do color commentary um and i'm appreciated that's cool like new orleans you guys really right. did the job for me i really appreciate that atlantic no, city no, started you, atlantic city started off on the wrong foot but that's all atlantic <laughs> but that's no but that's all atlantic city has right <laughs> two left feet and ugly shoes right so yeah, um yeah, so, right, so of course it's right, the wrong look, foot <laughs> um but, but, but that was you made the most yeah. out of all but mother load, all dude, that. mother load dude mother load aspen colorado I was they yeah. they invited me to MC MC for the people listening is basically what yeah. Mark Sherman does and what like um da mm -hmm. Dave Shaw does and I and I told yeah. him I'm not I'm not I'm a color commentator that's not my you know my original wheelhouse but it doesn't yeah. I can I'm just trying to say I can yeah yeah I yeah. think we all know I can do it it was it was great it was yeah. absolutely terrific I'll, I had the the crowd galvanized yeah sorry yeah, yeah, I liked it. I listen. I watched. I watched. That's the only reason I yeah. even watched the motherload. Some of the matches was because yeah. you were doing them and you posted them, and I was like, oh, I mean, I've, I've never played in the motherload, and I should. I need to go up there, but I heard that's the most beautiful. Yeah, but you you can afford to you game. can afford to make that trip. <laughs> yeah, nice. A lot of people cheap, don't want to go because <laughs> as what, for, in addition to, yeah. uh, in addition to it being really hard to get to, right? Um, yeah. It's expensive to live there. There's no hotels for single people. You got to get with a whole bunch of people and like rent like a house yeah. or whatever and this and yeah. that. And that's what I did. They gave me a house. Yeah, that's what you got to <laughs> do. They gave me a house. Yeah. And you know what I said? I said, whoever's nice to me, I'm going to offer them a room. No one was nice to me, so I, I kept the whole house to me. I, said, I looked around. I said, whoever's nice to me first, I'm, yeah. uh, you know, because I, yeah. I, had, I, had, I, had, I had three bedrooms. So I said, um, whoever's nice to me first, I'm going to hook them up. And I'm like, all right. It's a lonely world. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it big is big ass it castle. Is, mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, that, but big up to Corey Brindell. We have Corey yeah. Brindell who runs that. Uh huh. Big up to all yeah, the merchandise took, people. Took, he, the guy who did Let's Go Volleyball. Leon, what, was that? He took it over. He took it over from Leon. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I know that they had had some. So they either I don't know if it was a sell or whatever they mm. did, but apparently, I mean, apparently mm. it was done very well. Yep. I mean, it's it's a popular event. Everybody's always loved it. All the guys from here that have ever played in it. Yeah. You know, like and you would have even had some. Yeah, and if you want to turn enemies to friends, to that person who used to run it, let them to let them come to it, let them come to the event, 
He'll he'll see, he'll make eye contact with Corey Brindell. Corey will make <laughs> eye contact with him. And all you want to do is give each other a hug. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because healing, one, the healing is, uh, time is the best healer. And two, when you put it together, you uh, unless you're just a hater, you're just out there yeah. looking for someone's worst moment, uh, um, mm-hmm. all you want to do is give them a hug. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah, that's it. That's it. Make mm-hmm. the better everything. This sport, you know, you, it's sad to, that they even have haters in this sport because this sport's the one sport yeah. that you can't have. I mean, they, everybody needs to, to yeah. you know, bind together and try to pick right. it up. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't go back through what it went through in the past. What was it, 2012? Whenever they, I mean, I wasn't yeah. playing then, but I remember everybody talking about. It. I was like, "How the hell does this even happen with a professional sport?" And then you've got all these amazing write-ups that we read, you know, from the 90s. Mm-hmm. Um, and I haven't, I haven't read, read it's like a, book a boom yet, period. Tra- yeah. Oh, yeah. Stephus. So I mean, yeah, yeah. I haven't, I haven't read Stephus' book, but I read. But every time he posts something, I read mm-hmm. it and I, I comment back to him. Oh, those knows. blogs he, aren't they amazing? They were, oh, pff, man! Look, I Steph take is... those and I, I use it. I use it with my kids. Yeah, and I use it with the kids that I train at BJJ. Like I even actually posted something from an excerpt of what he did about the the, the BJJ competitors the, the here, and every single one was like. This is goddamn genius. I said, well, they came from a volleyball player. And I said, yeah. he's, he, I said, you don't have to be the best to win. I'm a, I mean, that's what's going on with me in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu right now. I said, but I said, I'm going to find a way to win. Mm-hmm. And that's, he's right. That's the yeah. mindset that he's had. And I mean, look at him. He was, he yeah. was, I mean, dude, that well, dude I, he owned Los Angeles for, you know, that period of time. I mean, yeah, he did well, everything. He was, it was awesome. Well, so, go, a gold medal will cement your, legacy forever that's the one thing they can't take from you for 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 any right. reason right i, I mean if dane were a little whiter yeah. <laughs> he probably his star power would probably be bigger but it's big anyway right you yeah, know like is. think it's about so this awesome. though dane is the only guy to win an olympic gold medal and in, uh, an avp crown and an ncaa yeah. championship as a player and a coach no other player holds that distinction not even that's karch amazing. karai so no, no, he should no, be no, no. like if Stephus is revered and Fenoy is like, oh my God, you're a god. We really need to take some of those lights and let it and let it shine on this 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 oh, this yeah. af- this absolutely class class act of of a human being, mm-hmm. Dane Blanton. But but yeah. Stephus, nope. I'm gonna read the Stephus thing. I mean, yeah. all all you needed to do was tell me Travis helped him write it. <laughs> Travis Mirwitter? Yeah. yeah. Travis helped him write it. I'm gonna read it. He's one of he's one of the yeah. most lively writers. Uh, you haven't you you know we had we've had in, possibly in the history of the sport. You know, yeah, and even yeah. though and I even forgive him his sentiments about New York. You know, he, he gets a pass. Be, <laughs> he gets a pass because he has mad skills. Yeah. He, does. <laughs> so, he does, man. Yeah. I love reading. And tra- Travis, whenever he first started yeah. playing around the same mm-hmm. time, he was over there in, in Florida. Mm-hmm. When I first met him, him and I were both, you know, coming up with these tournaments we played in. But and Travis was lucky enough to not have kids, and he moved out to California. But you know, like he's he's made such a name for himself. But his writing, man, I love everything he writes. I man, love reading. It's a lot. It's, then, it's alive a, off the page. Good, yeah, yeah, it's a lot. Even on even on a, on on a bad day. Right, writers mm-hmm. are gonna have bad days too, and they know they have a a deadline or yeah. their maybe their own self deadline where they have to put out stuff. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, he he, he inspired oh, yeah. me to write again. I have a weekly blog yeah. called um, Weekly Uncensored that I put yeah. on Facebook, um, yeah, and this that. this week is gonna is called um, uh, They're Fine. You're gonna love that. they right. it's called They're ah. Fine. It means nice. stop stop fighting. People who don't have a lot of money stop fighting each other about what rich people think or not, right? Like, Correct. I'll give you an example, yes. like abortion. Mm-hmm. Abortion is a hot button issue. Some people think, oh, it's a life form. Oh, it's not a life form and this and that. But stop yeah. arguing when, do you think rich people care about that? No. Um, like Anna Kasparian said, yeah. who um, she went in this rant. She said, they're so old, it's a non-issue to them. And if they're young enough yeah. and they do care, they're, they're going to get one regard is a rich is the law is banning abortion yeah. going to stop a rich family or a wealthy family from yeah. getting an abortion if they want one the answer no, is no not at all so no. that's what i meant by they're yeah. fine <laughs> dude uh, they're fine yeah, yeah. it's you know <laughs> yeah, stop. people people would stop mm-hmm. for a second and stop worrying mm-hmm. about to the left what people are doing to the left and the right of them yeah they it would it would take a lot of anxiety yeah. out of people's stop. lives i yeah. mean like like the whole stop the steal thing, like it's crazy because everybody that was part of stop the steal that ran for office didn't get elected. Yeah. But my right. question is, do you think the wealthy cares that AOC got yeah. reelected? They're there she's in their back pocket too. They're yeah. Dude, hey, here it is. They're fine. They are. They are. <laughs> let's not I mean, look, let's stop having fights over over what are. over what does not affect the people who control who who are controlling the narrative. 
they're, they're, they are unaffected yeah. by these things. Uh, the time. war in Ukraine? Yeah. Look, ain't no rich kid gonna join the army or feel the need to join the army where we might be we're on the we're on the verge of having some proxy war or like a battalion yeah. gets sent by the Saudis to, to fight the Yemen. But wealthy mm -hmm. people don't have their kids join the army and if they do they're officers no. and if they're and if they're officers, they're in the rear with the gear. That's they're right. fine. <laughs> they're going to, they're going they're going to West Point before they ever touch anything no, else, you know. No. And after so, West West but, Point they'll be a chairborn <laughs> ranger. And after they graduate right. West Point and you know give the government back what they pay for, they will mm -hmm. be a chairborn ranger. That's what we call them right. in the army. Yeah, fight fight a war with a paper yeah. and a pen. <laughs> that's it. That's exactly what yeah. So that's my new I mean, um uncensored thing, you know. I don't know how to yeah. put it together cuz my wife criticized me, criticized it, so now I feel like I got I got to rewrite it. So, you yeah. know, because well, she's she's smart. <laughs> we we could go on and on about government issues. Like I said, they're mm -hmm. all it's like it's all they're all in the same gang. It's no, yeah. you know what I mean? It's just yeah. They're all they're all up there. They're up there by yeah. themselves. So, but uh, I don't know if we have time for that one. But, no. Well, but you yeah. know what? We gave all that the attention it deserves. Let's talk about club again. Are you helping yeah. out with the club? Or are you are you coaching privately on the um, beach? Are you I'm, are you I'm, continuing I'm to do some, some work um for you know, for young minds out there? Funny enough, you asked that. I got I got asked about that a couple of times today. Which you know, in that setting, there are some there are some players. You know, and I've always kind of done this myself. I've I've, I've taken a few players. Um, one on one, and like especially if they're and their parents have come to me, they're like, "Look, we, we want they want she wants to play college." And mm -hmm. so right now the record's good. I usually take two or three and I put them in college if they give me about a year or two to help them out with. There's there's one or two now, but she's gonna sign. I think I might do some 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 practice with her and a couple of other groups and stuff. But as far as the club goes, um, indoor. No, I don't have the time for that. And no, I was beach, talking about beach. No oh, beach, indoor. Yes, but no, no. no. Why would you I, do that I, to well, yourself? Well, well, when Stella played, when Stella was okay. playing for CBC, um, Samantha Nestel, her her club, of course, she was playing. So what? I'm there. So let me go ahead and coach. And I, that was good. That was only that 12, 13 year old team. But on the beach, I'm I'm going to be doing some training with uh, Point Break volleyball, Spikes volleyball, same thing. Uh, Jason and Brittany Harrell. That's they've made. It's a new complex. It's just, I mean, it's phenomenal. It's on the water. It's got it's got a, a great restaurant associated with it. They it's right there in Slido, Louisiana. It's on Lake Pontchartrain, and then um, Nick he's got Spikes Volleyball, um, and he's actually affiliated with him. So they kind of merge together. So I'll be actually with Titan Performance. I'll actually be doing a lot of stuff with those two groups as well. So that's probably going to be a place where we have a lot of AVP America but um, events. But what also what we're going to do is we've kind of talked to some of the local colleges, and we'll probably be hosting. Uh, training or clinics there. So I'm not probably going to do any kind of coaching say, per se one-on-one, -on -one, but I will be doing one or two clinics this summer at Point Break Volleyball. And um, it, the ones that we've had so far last year were amazing. You, look, because it's every level. I've got kids that have never touched a volleyball and they come out and I've got kids that are mediocre and then I've got kids that are playing high school ball and they want to transition over beach. And so it's it's been a blessing to be able to do that with them. Yeah, so, yeah, so I, w I will be doing that, but it's only going to be more so on clinics. But I think we've got three or four AVP Americas set up for that juniors there, and I'm going to have one adult that I've got in the wings, and of course Mangoes. Mangoes has Drew Hamilton. Yeah. So he's he you know he's got his thing going on, and he does a great job. But we will yeah. have Louisiana Beach Week, which is going to be a gold qualifying event, is going to be at at Mangoes uh, in Baton Rouge. I can't give you all guys the dates yet, but me and the AVP and Mangoes have already kind of situated and set everything up. And who knows, we may even just bring up a, a main draw event over there too. You know. Because they've got the facility, you've seen the facility. Yeah. It's second. It's it's beautiful, and so, it also moves the volleyball needle. There will be fans of interest it, who will come out in mass and do that. Yeah, yeah, and and it's you know Coconut Beach is amazing. We know that, but like Louisiana Beach volleyball, I've gotten with a couple of other complexes around the state. There's a complex that they built in Thibodeau right. that everybody's they're raving about. There's two or three ple people uh, places around the state that mm -hmm. they're not central lo centrally located, but they've built 12, 14 court venues. Nice. Yeah. They've dumped in $2 million. So I'm going to go check them out and see what we got for right now. Mangoes is going to be the next hot spot for Louisiana Beach Volleyball. It's a great spot. For tight performance. Yeah. I mean, you've been there. So yeah. Tementino, like I said, I got to, ref I got to referee. <laughs> That's right. You got to ref one of the, one of the, the girls loved it. I appreciate you because I was actually ref in yeah. the ATMU yeah. championship. And I was but like, they're so I mature. It's so easy to ref. Just, oh, just sit up I know, there. I know. Just sit it's, up there and make sure they're honest about in and out. And then, and then yeah, hands, I dread, yeah, I dread coach, having a ref male. 
yeah. male finals. Because, right. you know, if, when I'm out having an event, I kind of like to do it myself just yes. so I don't have to hear he said, she said, especially yeah. even with the juniors. That's why they like the events. I mean, we, we try to give them two days of play. They get plenty of action. They get to go against all the best all the best kids in the, in the state and some out of the state. Yeah. But whenever it comes down to the finals, and, you know, I, I did something that was different this year. I actually paid out two of my events, the 18 U's. Boys and girls, yep. and that brought some that brought that brought some kids to the yard, which was amazing. I said, "Y'all are eighteen years old. Why I, wouldn't you? You know, you you're going to win your money back. Is what you're going to do. I mean, take so everything you said about refereeing beach, right? Mm-hmm. Multiply yeah. by eight, and that's how I feel about refing indoor. Oh, I, like, no, 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 like, I just I, yeah. won't, I don't want to touch no. that. You know? No, I so. I'm gonna I, I'm, I'm gonna meet up with Jason tonight because we have yeah. to talk about keeping our composure and our whatever and this yeah. and that and like our professionalism regardless of circumstances mm-hmm. though nobody said anything about this guy calling me calling me really cool you know yeah. no one reported that right that's that's okay yeah. yeah but i told him i will pay 200 dollars out of my own money hire an assistant coach just so they can ref i just i yeah. i don't when we're this when we're the work team like the the, mm-hmm. the, the coach or, or a parent or someone someone equivalent has to down ref and yeah. I don't want to ref. I don't want to. I don't. Yeah. It takes this level of concentration. It takes these level of tight calls of you know, someone's not going to be happy, right? Back row. Did he step on the line? Did he not? Was he above the height of the net when he did whatever? Are they out of rotation? Yeah. Is this team leaving early? Do you want to be a jerk and call them for leaving early? <laughs> or do you just want to go to the coach and say, hey, they're leaving, they're leaving early. I don't want to call it. And then the coach yeah. looks at you and they keep doing it anyway, right? Which is another yeah. situation. They, they, they did it anyway. And and um, Siragusa, who's like on on the main draw, he was assistant coach. He said, "You're ser- you seriously just call that?" And I'm like, "I did go up to them and ask him to not do it first, because which as a ref, like to be a fair ref, right? You want to say, I don't yeah. want to take the point. I just want you to not do it, yeah. <laughs> right? Exactly. Like if there's a screen, I don't want to take a point. I don't want the point back for the screen. I just want them to move, you know? Yeah. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. But, Big time. but no, it, I don't, I, I'm a hundred percent with you. You know what else I've, I've learned since I'm not coaching my, I'm not coaching my kids as much right now. Mm-hmm. And I'm getting the, and I guess I say I get to enjoy like Soren. He's playing, mm-hmm. um, he's playing uh, travel soccer. He's playing advanced soccer. Now I don't, I can't coach him. And so what, what's going on is I'm getting to watch, but I get to hear these parents and I've had to tell parents, I was like, guys, give the ref a break. Give the coach a break. Rappers, you know? I was dude. like, well, I said, I was like, exactly. I was like, you see those kids? I've coached half of them for the past four or five years. That's how I know. If I'd have known y'all were talking all this shit on the sidelines, I'd have come and told you something myself. Yeah. But like, and and then some of them do understand. I mean, you know, and these kids, but we're playing people from New Orleans because we're from Mandeville on the North Shore, you know, just North Louisiana, New Orleans. And we're playing teams from Baton Rouge and Mississippi. So it's it's these good, they're good teams. And, and this is like a funneler to some of these uh elite teams that they have on the North shore. Cause Louisiana is starting to have some pretty decent, mm-hmm. uh, uh, soccer teams. And so that's, what's going on. But like, man, it's just like, man, these parents are out of control. So uh, I'm, nothing... I'm, en- I'm enjoying being the dad that doesn't say anything. Mm-hmm. I just watch my kids play. They do good. Yeah. Thumbs up, you know, yeah, you're going to live but... and learn. Absolutely. And it's the, it's the reason why this parent got away with it because it didn't resonate with me <laughs> until later. Right. Yeah. My initial reaction was uh, because I'm I'm more chill. I was just like, ah, and t- uh, see you next time, you know, or better luck next <laughs> time. The, I said better luck next today, time. Satan. That's what I said. Yeah, better it. luck next time, you know. Yeah, that's it. But I, I mean, I hate that I get this long letter. People, this guy's yelling at his team, right? Oh, this guy's yelling this or that. But but this guy, right? If I have something to say, there's nothing to see here, right? And it's like, yeah. do I even report it? They, are yeah. they going to do anything about it? You know, I mean, no, they're uh, not going to do anything about it. No, so. it's just stupid. You know, People are stupid, yo. But um, I think I had one more question. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about your son, this this yeah. this kid that's become this this on on the on which, the verge which, of adult. No, the le- you're lefty, right? Um, yeah, yes. Yeah, uh, your daughter's uh, the sweetest person, and probably the sweetest person alive. I mean, to oh, the people she, outside she, of your household, right? Uh, um, but you know, but you know, what I'm saying that's what, it, what people see from the outside in. But your son, who's yeah. growing into be, being this real man, and in so many ways is is a man. In so many yeah, ways, yeah. like on his maturity level, is a man. He's left-handed, so that's yeah. already an advantage. So you know, he's already going to be yeah. a genius, right? Um, how's what's your son's level of interest in volleyball? um right now and um where does where does where's he kind of going with that his so his senior year he was all big he wanted to play football you know him and his buddies and he uh he kind of laid the volleyball thing down I okay mean, i was talking to a couple of schools for him and he had some he had some interest and stuff but 
for right now, he graduated. And like I told him, he said, well, I don't want to go to school just yet. I said, all right, well, you know, you're, you're on, you're on, time is ticking. Depends up to you. I mean, he's working for a construction group right now, but who knows? I told him, I said, the thing about beach volleyball is do you have to go to college to play? Of course not. I said, college is, if you don't think you're ready for college, don't waste our money. That's for sure. So figure that one out. I got him working with a buddy of mine. They're probably going to go down to Florida and do some work. But he did the other day. He did mention something to me. I mean, he's a, he's he's pretty physical. You know that he's he's matured. The football thing did make him into a you know more of a physical specimen. Well, type football thing. players produce super athletes. Yeah, they're, yeah. They're, they're, they can like play I told any him sport. This, I said, I said, look, dude. I said, you you uh, if you want to, he said, when I come down to go down there, I'm going to play volleyball. I said, well, you might want to practice a little first because just this isn't something. That, well, for him, I don't know. He played at such a young age; he could probably pick it up like this, you know. For me, I'm 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 talking to the kids that want me to coach, and I'm like, man, I may have to get in there with you because I need some reps before I get out on the sand again. But let's hope. I mean, let's see. I mean, he's he's got to make some decisions, some choices, just like I tell the other parent. I'm not going to push him to do anything. Mm-hmm. His his my 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 life or my life story isn't isn't gonna tr- it shouldn't be the one that train i don't i don't try to push it on him right i mean i'm big with my kids about that it's like no make your make your own way figure it out you can see what i've done and you can say hey that's either worked or it hasn't i'm going to tell you what hasn't worked to enable me to make things work if you want to take that with a grain of salt be my guest but for right now he, he's working out he's doing things he's you know he's he's living life as an 18 year old in south louisiana you know right. he's he's going to these parties and he's going out to new orleans and he's hanging out with his buddies he's having a good time but for right now yeah. i don't know i'm not sure where, where we see volleyball at or you know and i and i think that's where he he could actually excel if he did want to play you just have to we'll have to see yeah i don't know well sean you're you're a good father because very much like what some people said to me about me and kelly um it's it's like being a father has only made you a better version of yourself and at the same time not shaving anything from your personality that makes people like you to begin with the best compliment i ever heard was you're still jason and kelly you just have a kid (laughs) and that's how i feel about you you're still sean ladier you just got you just got you just got a couple of you just got a couple of monsters uh uh, growing up in your house man you know (laughs) yes yes uh you know i mean like with stella too she she wants to play tennis and some Mm. other stuff i mean she hasn't played volleyball much any anymore right now she was she started jujitsu this summer but i told her i said during the off season during and and i told her i said you've got to do it she didn't want to do it at first said you have to do it because as you get older in a year freshman in high school right now i said people and i'm not just saying boys people get they they alcohol gets involved and other things and people start to act different i said mm-hmm. you have to be able to protect yourself and yeah you know a whole summer big difference and she'll start back in descent she'll start back next month and you know yeah. during her breaks in school she's going to do it you can, let me he's tell a, you something uh, killer. let me tell you something an alky can sober up really, really quick when he just realized he, he uh, a second later he got his wrist broken. Right, the alcohol. There's a yeah. two second delay. Dude, my arm. Right. Dude, my yeah, arm. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Yeah, this it'll, chick. It'll, this it'll, it'll chick is nasty. Right. Oh yeah, exactly. You know, when she says no, she means no. You know, and I kind of told yeah. her. I said mm-hmm. her friends. I said, but yeah, I said. Uh, like, yeah, a quick make, they make that girl of mayor. Of they make that girl mayor. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nobody gonna prosecute nope. her for that. They make her mayor in your town in Louisiana. No, no, I told her. I said your homecoming court, mm. and you can you can be a mat uh, mm. a mat enforcer. Oh so my there god! There you go. I said that's that's a good little combination right there. But yeah, yeah. so but yeah, I'm about to go. I got a I got a coach tonight. Um, I'm, I'm actually going to Hammond where all the killers are at. Uh, yeah, we just united over there, dude. We just passed two hours. So <laughs> we did we, we did it, Sean. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not surprised whatsoever. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm coaching tonight. Uh, I got my last yeah. practice before like Thanksgiving holidays. Um, I have open uh, clinics for the girls who are sticking around because I, I actually want to see who's on that champ stuff because I challenge yeah. my girls. I'm like, you're going away. That's fine. But like the girls who are winning the titles or winning these yeah. tournaments, you know, you know where they are. They're not on vacation. They're they're that's, savaging that, it. So, the, so ask ask who that's you want to be. So we have open clinics for the weekend. But sorry, go ahead. that's what we have this week. So mm-hmm. whoever, when I walk into that gym tonight and I see who's out the mat, it's going to be a yeah. bunch of beasts. And yeah. So you, that's you know, Soren Soren. He's yeah, I put him in an in an older class because he's mm-hmm. you know he's ninety pounds as a seven year old. So he's got to compete with kids that are heavier. But but like this week we've already talked about it. We've got some open mats. I did some training with some guys uh, yesterday, but. It's uh yeah you're gonna the people that stay during these breaks and like Christmas break that's the ones you know right. what I mean well for uh for the people 
who actually follow the podcast, who actually, the, the handful of people I can count on one hand who actually live in the South Bay and listen to this podcast. Um, I do volleyball clinics every Sunday, um, yep. starting after Thanksgiving from 4 to 5.30, ages 13 to 17. Every weekly clinic is going to have a concept, uh, serve to space, yeah. um, serve, receive, you know, holds, um, yeah. uh, one move to yeah. the ball, straight and simple, stuff like that. So um, so every, every clinic, hour and a half clinic, is going to be consolidated to um, one one or two primary focuses and, and those fundamentals. So I just wanted to throw that in. Big up to Sean Ladig. Big up to Flow Volleyball that made this happen for me for for Colorado. Big up to Kamina Sports. Gave me some yes. gave me some pretty cool gear, some shorts and a tank top. Dave's got some um, cool stuff, man. don't they? Dave, yeah. Dave, Dave used to hook me and Cameron up, you yeah. know, because uh, when we were playing. And I tell you what, I used to love, I used yeah. to love his tanks and everything. Let's give something back, though, man. Let's keep plugging them, you know, because um, right. the, the yes. gear, because yes. it's actually cool. It's actually uh, comfortable to wear. It's 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 oh yeah, it's snazzy. Still, it's it's stylish, you know. So I still, I still wear my plastic yeah. stuff. I mean, so I know Camino Outdoor. He's got mm. all. He's, he's broadened his uh, horizons with that one. But yeah, for sure, Dave. Dave definitely everybody in the volleyball community and cool, anybody man. else listening any um it up. so any um website or maybe insta handle <laughs> that people want to know more about what you what you've been up to or or it's none of their Basically. business you're a private dude <laughs> well we i mean we've got uh we've got everything with you know rome wasn't built in a day right. with uh with the ig handle yep. and facebook i mean i, I probably i think mine I'm got hacked guys one. i can't i yeah. can't yeah i can't <laughs> i can't follow sean i got yeah, hacked it's, it's so crazy you, Cody that, that, people, well. that people do that, man. Yeah. I swear, it's it's insane. But um, but no, I mean everything else. I mean, like I said, I, I'm competing for Grace United Team Jukal South, and you know we're gonna. I'm gonna keeping everybody up. This 2023 season is gonna be a big one. I'm number. I'm fourth in the world right now. in My division, I dropped, but I got I got I got Europe. I've got uh Pan Americans. I got the four majors and a couple of smaller ones. So if uh. You know, Worlds is going to be in Vegas, and after Worlds, if we can, if we can take that title, I'm already made it, made my mind up where I'm going to go down to Brazil and I'm going to compete. Wow. I go to Brazil and have, yeah. have you know number one against number two, make it make it a dance. Nice. So be safe yeah. out there, okay? <laughs> we'll do, brother. Like Chael Sonnen said, it's not a bowing culture. You bow to them, they'll they'll take your wallet. They hit you in the head and take your wallet. <laughs> I'm oh, kidding. Man. I love my Brazilian I'm, friends, but I thought that was a cool cho- uh, joke by oh, Chael they're, they're, they're to wild. like arouse they're people. Wild, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah. If you want to antagonize someone, that's the line mm-hmm. that, that you said that Chael just said. <laughs> you know, it's like oh, God. you know you upset yeah. them. They saw that on the internet. He's like. I didn't know they had internet. <laughs> I'm just like, dude, <laughs> dude, yeah, don't go to cool. Brazil. <laughs> right? But you go to yeah. Brazil. They'd love you, man. You're a hunk. Oh, I'm, I'm, de- I'm definitely gonna come go down there with some, some of my buddies. That hopefully I can get a couple of Brazilians to go down mm-hmm. there with me because they can, you know, they can speak the Portuguese for nice. me. Nice. All right, people. So Sean Ladig might love you, but for me. You know, I think I love you guys too. I think that's what Sean brings to the table. Yeah, I don't hate none of y'all. I love y'all too. Okay, that's right. For all of you at home, for all of you on the lunch line at Starbucks, for all of you on your iPhone or iPad, for all of you on your desktop, who runs the world? Old school people. Old school. From my man Sean Ladig. I'm Jason DeBiz. This is possibly episode 159 of the Option Podcast. Stay with me. I'm gonna hit my music and we're 